There it is. Hello and welcome to the Dope Academy podcast. I'm your host, Mona Brown. I have very special guests with me today. A few good men from Ish Talk TV. You guys may have seen them already on the show before. Um, we've done collabs. I've been on their show. They've been on my show. And we have them in the building today. So right here, I have Mr. AJ. Salute, everybody. Round of applause. And then on Zoom, we have Brian from Ish Talk as well. Brian, yep, yep. Brian has yep, to work yep. tonight, so he couldn't come down. But he's here with us in digital technology. In digital technology. Brian, why is half your face cut off? Can you move over? <laughs> it's freaking me out. There we go. Uh, like he's being uh, held hostage yes. in an underground <laughs> mountain area. <laughs> Blink <laughs> twice if you are in trouble. <laughs> so everybody um, who's tuning in tonight or later on when we upload to YouTube, I just want to thank you for checking the show out today with the Dope Academy and Ish Talk TV. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe our various pages and our YouTube pages for sure. This is my birthday weekend. Happy, Ooh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. So, I'm a little hungover. <laughs> Um, it was actually Thursday, but I worked on Thursday, and then my friend and me went to um, the harbor, um, which is in Maryland. It's a DMV um, mm -hmm. for those who are watching from other places. And there's like Ferris wheel, water, nice vibe, you know, all that. Drank at one place and ate. Then we moved on to um, D.C., and we hung out like on H Street. And then I ended the night with my favorite food, which is H and chicken and... You know, drunk eating. H chick and chicken? H and chicken is my shit. What's that? It's, it's called H and chicken? H and chicken. It's on H Street. Mm. Yeah. And you can get the best chicken and waffles. You can. Their food is just banging. Nice. If you ever go by there, you'll see a rack of people just in the waiting line. Like, it's it's good. It's my shit. You know, honestly, you just told them your age because at least you didn't resort to pizza. Jumbo slices. That's a, that's a young that's a young kid that's a young head move. No, I always want Asian chicken. I feel you. I want it. I want it. If y'all if you have jumbo slice, boy, your stomach gonna be sliced. Gonna be that. sliced up. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling so you. I woke up, you know what I'm saying, because I was definitely you know drinking and smoking yeah. all night or whatever. But nice. um, woke up with quite the little hangover, letting me know yes, you're not as young anymore. But it's all good. <laughs> I'm maintaining. But my good peoples here um, brought right. me some gifts because it is my birthday, like I said. So look at what I got, y'all. This is like a little mini bar cocktail set. And all you do is like shake the bottle of mixer with one shot of rum and ice in the shaker. You pour into a cocktail glass. Like wow. it tells you like what That's to do. Right. It's amazing. The periodic table of a good time, y'all. Periodic table of a good time. <laughs> I am just so excited about this thing. I, I love it. And it's a great gift. And brought my favorite drink. Everybody know I'm a crown apple girl. It's just that's the best crown way to apple. go. It's hot. That's the, that's what I call the holiday drink right here. It's it, it, it's perfect with. This oh, year. it's the it's 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 Christmas cheers. This is the Christmas cheers it's drink. The, it's the every every day drink to me. Not every day, but every holiday. Now see, look at the colors. It brings out the the holiday spirit. It does. It's very very yes. Christmassy. You know the. And then to match, I have my red Justice for Xavier cup. And we're going to talk more about Justice for Xavier. Um, those of you who are regular viewers and listeners, you already know that um, I've covered his case and story many times and also had his mother on, um, my friend LaToya. And we're going to kind of just get into that and just give you um, a little more information on it so that you can start looking into that and supporting um, this woman. And especially, you know what I'm saying, right now. She's on my heart a lot because it's the holiday. It's her first holiday, you know what I'm saying, Christmas without her son. And they were super close, like super close, you know. Um, yeah, and if you watch any of the videos of him that people post, he was he was a mama's boy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, just keep her in your thoughts and prayers, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So what we're going to do today is <laughs> we are going to do a year-end wrap-up. Now, of course, we can't cover everything um, but I just tried to pick out some stories from this year that were interesting or either what the fuck moments or, oh, I was, I was trying not to curse for the first 20 minutes on YouTube, but too late. Anyways, um, any crazy moments or whatever. And then like also things that have happened in black culture, hip hop, you know how we do. Mm -hmm. So my good engineer from Fredericksburg Public Access Radio, 
DJ EK, Eric is here, and he is going to put the slides up, and they're going to be random, and we're going to just get into it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, tuning in today. Make sure you leave your comments so we can go ahead and interact with you while the show is going on. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, what are we going to have first? Let's see. I mean, mm -hmm. first off, we finally was it. This year was where people can actually go outside, and it, it it wasn't frowned upon. It's still a little frowned upon, but it was more of all right. They they had the little uh, the jab that came out, so yes. everybody can get that. No, it's frowned upon if they think you don't you're not vaccinated. That too. But it's not frowned upon if you don't wear a mask. It's like I don't know. The world is just weird. Look, man. A lot of weird stuff. Going look, on. just last year though showed me we can't follow instructions. Oh, I know. <laughs> if we would have stayed our asses inside. And quarantine, like we, like everybody was supposed to, mm. it, I think by this time it might have we've seen more of a positive like effect where it, it would have gone down significantly. But because people didn't quarantine like they were supposed to, uh, you know, look at where look at other, look how other countries. So are. I can see that this is going to be a battle because that's another slide, and he's already going into the Corona talk, like a battle. Fauci. I am the moderator. <laughs> Let's just get this established right now. No, I'm just joking. Um, but speaking of battles, versus yes, versus continued this year, and we will go ahead. We're going to park that for now. But we're going to go back and have the, the uh, Corona conversation. Oh, versus mm -hmm. um, continued this year, and if you don't know what versus is, versus is a platform started by Swiss Beats and Timberland that pretty much gives flowers to all of our legendary and you know. Um, well-loved artists from back in the day. It mm -hmm. gives them a way to get their stream numbers up and they perform and do these do these battles. So, I'm going to just highlight some of my most interesting favorite verses of the year and you guys can definitely do the same. Uh, all right. My first one, Keith Sweat versus Bobby Brown. <laughs> if anybody watched it or you didn't watch it, you really should go back and watch it. Keith Sweat was drunk out of his mind but he looked like the smooth <laughs> uncle at the family reunion. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he did. You mm -hmm. know, if you're not used to seeing Bobby lately, you didn't. Bobby has Bobby's a little swole. That neck is thick. The stomach is out. It's that jaw that uh -huh. gets me. That, that coat jaw is still on point. <laughs> you see that? I just can't because every time I hear uh, Pusha T's line, we give you key, that uh, line. Bobby Brown Bobby jaw. Bra give you that Bobby Brown jaw. I'm like. <laughs> and it was on full display. Yes. It was. It was great though. The energy was good, but it's just. Something about me, it's like, you know, when you're a kid and somebody farts and you laugh, you know what I'm saying? That's me at my core. Something about me likes to see Raggy legendary shit. celebrities drunk. I don't know, like on trying to perform their songs. It's just enter it's entertaining to me. Which also brings me to um, Stephanie Mills and Chaka Khan. Hmm. I wasn't really, even, I love their music, but I wasn't going to watch a verse because that's just not, you know, I was just like, I'm not going to watch that one. Um... And then I was on social media and somebody said, oh no, Shaka is out of her mind. You know what I'm saying? She's doing all this or whatever. So I tuned in. I have to give Stephanie Mills props because she like protected Shaka Khan and was, you know, holding her down. Shaka Khan was on something. But I didn't laugh. I find it funny because if you know her story, she's struggled with drug use for yeah, many years. Has. So I was like, I hope, you know what I'm saying? She all right. So... Last but not least, my favorite and maybe my favorite verses of all time is the Bone Thugs and Harmony versus Three Six Mafia. I want to talk about it. Did y'all see it? Of course, I, we saw. It. We saw it like I we caught it after the show. Mm -hmm. I caught the mid. I think we caught the mid to the end, but it was it was okay. But overall, I was disappointed in Bone Thugs. That's my mm -hmm. favorite rap group of all time. Personal favorite group. Mm -hmm. it, Honestly, three six got them. They 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 swept the floor with them. They, they swept the floor. Okay, so I disagree. Um, I was not disappointed in Bone Thugs. I was disappointed in whoever was controlling their um, audio because their audio was horrible, which has an impact on verses. We've it does. seen that, right? And I have a um, problem with their particular song choices. That's what. That's why I said they got washed. Be no, no, no. They definitely got washed, and I think that. It wasn't a good matchup because the type of records that 3-6 has, you know, it's just different. I don't think it was a good matchup. They definitely lost, but I still love them. It was great. Of course. But I, I believe they lost because of their audio 
and because because three six didn't have the best um, song choices all the time either, in my opinion. There were some songs I'm like. I counted four songs where I was like, okay, they could have went somewhere else, but for the most part... But four songs can, can mess you up. That's what I'm saying. So Bone had some wiggle room, even though they picked some songs that they shouldn't but, have. But that's what makes it, for me, makes it bad for Bone Thugs, because it's like, yo, they were giving you an opportunity. They, like, missed like, a couple, yeah. they missed a couple of haymakers. You were supposed to counter. I'm mm -hmm. sitting here like, all right, uh, no first of the month. I mean, I didn't... No first of the month. So, no. Busy, because I watched everything after. Busy said, because everybody's asking that. Like, first of all, you should have came out to that. or so. they well, After the beef, they should have came back on with that or exactly. something, right? Um, He told Fat Joe that, first he said, I don't know why they didn't play for <laughs> But then he corrected it, and he said, Bone Thug has a catalog. We can use that later on in another one or something like that. I don't know who all dropped right, the ball yeah. on that. But I agree, it was, they dropped I didn't hear, look into my eyes and tell me what it is you see. Uh, come nope. on, it's like, mm -hmm. wh where, where was that? They could have played. Even though I've always hated that song. Uh, that song fucking slaps. I hate that song. No, and then you got Mo Murder on, on East Night Eternal. And then Mo Murder. They, oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, they didn't play it long enough. No, they, they played it really shortly, but they definitely did Mo Murder. Because Mo Murder is my, and then Double Glocks to the, Double Glocks? Where was Double, double Nine Glocks? Where was they, the they did. Shot to the Glocks? They yes, play, they did. When they play Shot to the Glocks? In the very beginning. Oh, you see, missed I, it. I wasn't Yeah, there. I'm about to say, yes, they did. I'm about to say. Yeah, and you can't come in half of the show and then say something. Did they, they didn't play the getaway, did they? <laughs> no. See, you see what I'm saying? If, if Bone Thugs are smart, they should just play East 1999. All those songs were they should. They, I, I was mad that they didn't do... Uh, Bill, Mr. Bill Collector. That's what or, I'm saying. They, um, they could have played all Bud of Smokers them. Only. They was they could have played. They didn't even play. Dude, like I t I fuck with Bud Smokers Only over Buddha Lover. Me too. But they did Buddha. Lover. But I guess people like that one more. But I'm I'm definitely there. But watching it from start to finish, I was not disappointed in Bone. What Bone showed is a motherfucking clinic. They I don't care. They they nobody. Go back and look at Busy's verse on Thug Love when they perform it. Of course. And on Notorious Thug. No, just watch him and what he does. Who else can do that? I mean... Crazy would come out the back and just... Oh, yeah. And be, there's nobody who raps like that. And they are... When when I watched it, I could see their influence on so much music we listen to today. Absolutely. So it made me proud. Yeah, but you get... But they, did, but they lost. They lost They lost heavily because you got to remember, 3-6 had shit that slapped. They got strip club songs, though. No, Bone but, don't got no strip club no, songs. No, but they, it's more than that. Like, people sleep on the fact that 3-6 is one of the first groups that talked about the pills, the syrup, and mm -hmm. that gangster southern style classic shit, too. That's why they, that's why they put on sipping yeah, on but, some sister and, and, and I yeah, went crazy. It, it wasn't even, but <laughs> they got more than stripper songs. They got hitter songs. They got drill music songs. They mm -hmm. got spiritual crazy songs. And here's the thing. You know spiritual what? Spiritual crazy songs. This is he wow. definitely said it. Thank you for calling him out, Brian. No, they do. They got songs. They, no, if you go back and listen to some of Lord Infamous's rhymes, them shits are scared. Look, they'll put a they'll put Suge Knight in fear. But no. Um, What's up, Tobias? Thank you for tuning in. I'm just. My thing is that you know why they took it easy. They didn't even really get into Project Pat's bag. They didn't even. Thank really God. Put, no, it, it would have been a nightmare. That's what I'm saying. No. They took it. I easy. don't like Project Pat. Oh, uh, you you. Hey, that, I'm, to I, each his I'm own. a person who doesn't think Three Six Mafia and them are as dope as y'all as y'all say. I think they got some songs. I think Juicy J. If, and Paul, they're like dope producers. Their influence is bigger than what you think when it comes because... I'm not saying their influence isn't. Yeah, I was about to say... But their influence is not as big as Bone. There's it's a difference, not. though. Bone is more generational. Um, they had Three Six stole some of Bone's style when they came out. Uh, that was what the beast the beast I, I know, that. yeah. We, but then also, uh, Three Six said that they wasn't about that life because they had a whole diss album called Live By Your Rep. And that shit was crazy. Like, there's a song called If You Niggas Ain't Scared, Throw Your Sets in the Air by 3-6. And they was going directly at Bone. So if you a real big 3-6 fan, say that then. Look at you. No, I'm a big Bone th I'm a big, I'm a student of hip-hop. I love every, if you got dope shit, I'm a love it. Now, per, now, for me personally, I still love the West Coast. That's my favorite era of all time, the 88 to 96 era. You know, mm -hmm. 92, 96, you ain't nothing topping that shit. Death Row uh -huh. era, you know, should have been there. Before, I wish I was um, there. I want to, can we get to, they should have got to their hits. It was their first one. Um, but that just shows, you should have learned from the dip set yes. versus uh, of what T speak on to it. do. I was very disappointed in that one. And they were doing their, they were lip singing, right? Yeah. And they didn't even get to this, like, like the real 
real Dipset. Who was lip song. singing? Wasn't Dipset? Uh, they they wasn't good. They weren't. Um. Oh, when Dipset did the locks joint. Yeah, the locks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dip, Dipset. Dip, Dipset the locks. Say it again. Dipset didn't. It's like when you you gotta understand. You gotta play your shit like the things that the the culture like. That's why. Uh, Ron to tell you best. That's why uh, kissing all them, watch them because sometimes that that uh, music hit shit don't mean anything to the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let 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 the Susie Q's and the uh, suburban people fuck with that. That's all gravy. But we want the real shit, the shit that impact that the culture influence. That's why. Dipset started getting washed. They just, they, in my opinion, I think they were lazy. I think they were lazy. Too, they're, and yeah. they're, they're Too not lazy. vibing together, and you could see it. Right. right. Yeah. You could, you could it, feel right. that there was no chemistry there. Where the locks, you could feel that they still had the they chemistry. They still fucked with each other. Yeah. Because when Jada dropped that honey song with uh, Mariah, I said, up. Oh. I was like, okay, okay. I just went, you know what? You guys lost. He's like, oh, yo, we got song for the ladies too. And then, hey, God, I'm sorry, y'all. Did, uh, did Bone do. Breakdown with Mariah Carey? Yes. Yes. And let me talk about that. Oh, yes, thank so God. So that, that part was a moment, too, that I felt bad for them because Mariah, you know, everybody has asked Mariah to do verses, and she just ain't going to yes. do the shit. I'm convinced that this part, at this point, the only way we're going to get Mariah to come out on a verses is if the brat does a verses because that's, like, her best friend, and she would mm. do it. Other than that, Mimi is off making marshmallows and Christmas stuff and ain't tripping, right? Yeah, getting paid for the rest of her but life. But because that song is so big and the way that they built Break it up, down. she should have been out. They should have really, really worked. I don't. Maybe they did on at least having her she do did. like a video, like, "Hey guys," like she should have made an appearance because it it was very lackluster because mm -hmm. Three Six Mafia brought out so many. They brought out Bang. They like, brought out Wayne. When they you know fucking, what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. When they, but side to side is such a fucking, yeah. side to side is the shit. I'm in the club smoking, got my hands twisted, mm -hmm. my butt. Look, mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm saying. They got shit, I'm man. in the club, yeah. folks, yeah. up. Got oh, my, right. oh, yeah. yeah, that shit so does go. <laughs> See how wide on this? I got a bitch with a big old bra. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> come on. That's what I'm saying. They got shit where they it's got just like... The Terry Tower coming out. It, it, I was oh, weak. I was laughing, but Terry Tower, <laughs> he, Terry Tower looked like he been waiting on that call. Exactly. He was like, I want to, I want to play a pimp again. Look at how, hey, but and that's and that's what I'm saying. They won an Oscar, though. So I'll be telling people, you know what I think? I think people just the way that people treat Three Six is the way people treat Master P. You might not be able to relate, or it's not as entertaining as what you what you like, but that doesn't mean the inf the influence ain't as big. So, that I respect Master P. I'm a huge Master P fan. I was a huge No Limit fan. Cool. But I'm not going to sit here and act like that music has aged well. Some 3-6 Mafia <laughs> music has not aged well. well. I'm just going to be honest. Every artist has a, has songs that don't age I well. I think a lot of their stuff hasn't, but maybe it's just because it's not my thing. I right. never was a huge... Now, like I said, like side to side, sipping on some sister, those are going to be... Those, that, that's every... Yeah, but yeah. I get... Because, you know, certain people will say, well... They'll, when they talk about business people and entrepreneurs, I'm like, they everybody likes to bring Jaden. I'm like, Master P did that shit way before him. If anything, Master, Master, lived, P, Master P is the blueprint that everybody yes. should really look at. And I like, told, really. and, but but what's the first thing a lot of niggas be saying? Well, I can relate more to Jay Z. No, you can't. You didn't sell weed. You didn't sell coke like Jay. And, and you did, and you didn't. Jay Z did not market exactly. nowhere the way that, exactly. that Master P marketed and how innovative. Right. That man was putting his merch on homeless people. Exactly. And, and Like, that's <laughs> crazy. And my thing is, if you, now, if you want to say that you feel Jay is much better, then just say that. Yeah, yeah but, artistically. But, but people, they look down, that's, the way they look down on Master P is the way they look down on 3-6. 3-6 is not known to give you, like, straight bar bars, but they give you certain bars where if you're from the South, you will relate to that. Like 8-Ball and MJG, they got a song. That was though, too. They came out, But, too. yeah, when they sung, there's a song where he was, like, riding down, chilling in my ham sandwich. Niggas was like, what the fuck? It's you a know ham what? sandwich. It's a bro ham. Mm -hmm. It's a bro ham cat. Like, that shit go, if you're from the South, you don't know what that means. It's just. Well, maybe that's what I mean. I mean, okay, like, okay, Bone transcended every race, every, every borough, every South, North, whatever, worldwide, right? But so did 3-6. 3-6 did not. Yes, there are did. a lot of white kids who have no idea who 3-6 Mafia uh, music was. No, there was. are certain, you, you know, those are the white kids that the parents want them to keep safe from the street shit. No, but, but, they, but they know who Bone is. No, but, what I'm trying to tell wait, you. wait, wait, wait. Bone a is lot more of suburban, universal, there's, there's a lot, yes. No, there are a lot of suburban white kids that know about fucking scissors and lean and drugs Yes, they do. Yes, they do, but, but 3-6 is not a mainstream act. It's just not. Well, 
I'm gonna tell you what. Maybe based on content. They, and they gotta. There's a. Because at the time, yeah, and there's it a, wasn't how it is now. And there's a whole album that explains that whole shit. They got an album called The Most Known Unknown. Of mm -hmm. course, but that's the whole point. Uh, what DJ Paul said. He said, We got a lot to do with today, what's going on in the streets of hip hop. Niggas in the press don't realize it, but niggas in the streets realize it. So the culture is fully aware of 3 6. That's why, in a way, the, it's, to me, the culture is what's more important than just because of what fucking people, worldwide people know. Because at the same time, that's the commercial shit that people, that they use to get people in. Because most of the time, the commercial songs are not even the best songs on the album. That's true. To me, if your commercial songs are the best songs on the album, that's a, that's a fail. That's a flop. I got to have shit where I was like, yo... This is where I, the culture made this song. We can relate to it. That's I don't. Why I, I don't agree with that though, because I to do. me, a lot of a lot of Mace's best songs was his com his commercial song. Yeah, but Mace's never. Album. Nobody's never gonna put Mace in their top ten. That's true. Drake did. Oh, oh, Drake I don't did. Care. <laughs> I rest my case. I don't have the. I don't have the horn ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do it for you. What's that song? Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, Mason's not. Nobody ever said, hey, Mason's one of the goats. But no, um, one of my favorite verses, though, uh, actually, my favorite is Snoop and DMX. That was a really good one. That, was that wasn't really... this year, right? That was last year. I, that was last year. I'm just, yeah, that was last oh, year. I'm sorry. Uh, was Gucci in them this year? No, no, that was last year too. I wanted, I wow, wanted yeah, to twenty twenty yeah. had much better ones because <laughs> when that nigga Gucci said, I put him in the dirt. As being a, a Ja Ru fan, uh, <laughs> him, him and the Fat Joe one. Oh I yeah. Was, uh, I'm happy everyone gave Ja Ru his flowers. Oh, yeah, that's his. That's yes. his. Dog. That's his homie right there. No, but it's true. I'm happy about that too. I'm. I, I love. We're gonna talk about Fifty a little later because we have a thing to talk about. But I love <laughs> how Fifty comes in. How he, you know, what I'm saying. But people need to start giving Ja Ru his flowers. Like, come on. Yes. How how you gonna? Turn your back on the man when you know he was running shit for years straight. I say t he had two years where he but was. But you turn your back on the, on the man based on right. information from somebody who switched up and started doing the same exact stuff. Well, that well he, we gonna get to 50. We gonna get to 50. We gonna, we gonna get, get to, to 50. No, no, I agree. Look, when I, once you get, when you, everybody knows. Just like I said, the culture knows when it comes to the 50 and Josh shit. When you got older, you was like, wait a minute. Hold on, I was bamboozled. But, but was we should have known way. back then that Fifty is a marketing not, not, genius. Not yeah, we should have known that too. But also look at his his um his resources outweigh John. Ja. John ja didn't have a chance against the likes of M, an upcoming guy who was popping of that, who was controversial and popping, and Dr. Dre, who was a legend already. He was his shit was set in stone. So no, nah, I, I don't think I no, nah, because Murder Inc was on top. Yeah, Murder Inc. No, Murder Inc. Ja Rule was on top. Murder Inc. Herb got it. People was tired of that motherfucker trying to do them stupid ass uh, fake uh, Italian no, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, <laughs> skits. Like it, it was hard. No, it was awful the way he was Hold doing on, it. Hold on, let me let me say something. I would say that the DMX and the uh, Ja Rule and the uh, Jay Z, that that whole era was epic. So you can't really, you know, what I'm saying. But the back to the verses, you can tell like Fifty Cent and Fat Joe are some sore losers. Yes. Remember what? Remember what Fat Joe said? He, he called them bitches. He called Lil Mo and. Yes. Uh, did he call Ashanti a bitch too? No, it was Dusty? Lil Mo no, and um Vita. Vita. She Vita. Mm. Yeah. He. Uh... I love me some Vita. Mm. Oh, look <laughs> <laughs> nah, but Joe, Joe got, he's one of them other people where we have to check him because he says certain shit where it's like, all right. And he gets away with it. And I be like, no, nah, nah, he ain't getting away and with it no more. And he's running the whole verses and shit. We, yeah, it's like, bruh. And it's like, with Joe. Ooh, this is a good comment. Hold on. What's up? Tobias said, Ja added the whole rappers who can't sing, but I'm going to try yeah. element. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true, yeah. though. Yeah, wait, wait, That's yeah. true. So oh. anyways... Based on verses um, from those of us like us who love hip hop, we we do thank Swiss Beats and Timbaland because it is a great thing to have discussions. To, yeah. I love talking about the verses with people from a younger generation, or because I was there for a lot of this stuff. Now some stuff is a little older, right? right. But I grew up hearing my mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what you I, think about the um uh the K not K yeah KRS One and the and oh. the um. Okay. Rakim. Okay. I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about, I'm about to go on a limb. Go ahead. I'm about to let y'all know something that people ain't gonna expect, but that's the dichotomy of Mona. That, that's what's me. up. That's why we got. I, I'm not her. a KRS person or fan. But but that's all right. N nothing's wrong with that. And I respect your honesty. Yeah, because I'm just not. The problem that I have with a lot of people who's who, it's like 
if you like somebody by default because of what the, because what what the world, says. then I don't want to hear that shit. Like, somebody told me they like um, Brock Kim and, and he's the GOAT. I'm like, okay, give name me all the tracks on his album besides Paid in Full and I Ain't No Joke. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Shut Rakim, that shit up. Um, Rakim is dope, and I give Rakim the utmost respect because yeah. I, I definitely feel that he is the godfather of, I mean, or the, yeah, the godfather yeah. of um, writing bars out mm-hmm. and writing beats a certain way, right. and he is the godfather of why lyricism became lyricism. Solidified. Um, solidified. And I can I can take you through a whole deep dive on that. We won't do it today of how yeah. you can directly yeah. you can directly link it to Rock Him. But do I listen to Rock Him all the time? I mean, I you know what I'm saying, let's see if I know the ledge, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> here and there. Right. But right. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and be like, oh yeah, I rock with that all the time. I would probably listen to more Big Daddy Kane. Me too. Than I like Big Daddy on like a regular a, basis. I like Cool G rap more. Cool G and, rap too. And being a pioneer My, doesn't the symphonies are still a dope song. Right. And but. being a pioneer doesn't mean you are the best at it. Just like I tell people when they I've I've had to give them hip hop one one about the earliest gangster rappers. A lot of people thought it was the West. I'm like, no, it was actually Schooly D. D. Yeah. And I'm like, he was a pioneer. His influence, but... From Philly, right? Yeah, from yeah. Philly. Uh, PSK. I told people it was it was great, but that's not the greatest gangster uh, mm-hmm. shit. Like, the West Coast took it to another yeah. level. And, and that's what music is. If you really watch music, yeah. I don't care if you're talking about hip-hop, rock, whatever. You can see innovators, and you're like, yeah, they was dope. I like how they did that. But then somebody else will come along and they just, what they do to it. They enhance it to another yeah, so level. Pi- yeah, being a pioneer, guys, doesn't mean you're always the best at it. It just means you were you were the originator of it. Don't get it twisted, but you can always take it to another and level. And we need to start being honest about it. Right. And stop acting like Like that. you said, KRS, I like KRS, but am I going to, I have to be in a mood to listen to KRS. I can't just, mm-hmm. I have never heard niggas bump, step into the world on a regular basis. KRS. Has questionable lyrics. If y'all talking about questionable lyrics about certain stuff, you know, talking about girls being good when they're young, underage. And um, if you have followed the unfortunate African Bambada, Bambada and Zulu Nation scandal oh, of how yeah. they were molesting all these young boys out there, and then go look up KRS One and what his response is to it. So I was kind of happy because I was like, I ain't really never like you anyway. Yeah. Pretty motherfucker, but you ain't pretty. Okay, next slide. That was crazy. That was crazy verses. <laughs> some podcasts got to do an ish talk versus be more. Yes. I think we'll I think we'll watch some people. We'll watch some people. <laughs> we got to do an ish talk versus podcast versus. How are you gonna do that? So the the most views. All right, this next one. Where in the world is Carmen motherfucking San Diego? <laughs> okay. Where, at? Where is Waldo? Let's get into it. Now, I told y'all people, if you know me, from the very beginning, stop stop praising this woman because she was black, because she wasn't black, like y'all think she black. Mm. And I said that, and people were like, what do you mean? And the pearls. And, da, 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 da. and I said, because I don't follow people based on what people tell me. Look mm-hmm. at her voting record. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at her record and what she's done. But she went to Howard, Mona. Man. <laughs> and she and she also, she's ski-wee. And she ski-wee. also did some egregious shit when it came to the Oscar Grant case. So how can we on one second be fighting for justice and we're voting someone in? Who, but you know what? Don't matter. Leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> so you want to say, oh, I'm voting for the lesser of two evils, whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. So a lot of people went out on a limb uh-huh. and was like, you know, I don't really rock with Biden like that, but I'm going to go ahead and give him my vote. And they did. This mother... This guy has moonwalked. <laughs> he has moonwalked on a level that Michael Jackson couldn't even do. And he kind of knew it. But you know what? When you're starting to feel, look in, like the Crypt Keeper, that might happen. Whatever. Biden is Biden. Okay. Yeah. Kamala, who they put in place because she was a black woman. She wasn't the type we needed. We needed one of them black women from Georgia. Okay. <laughs> but she wasn't the type we needed. But they put her in place and you want to run on this and I'm I'm like y'all and I'm this and whatever. We haven't seen her since the day she goes in office. Okay. They've done crazy stuff since then. They have not done anything to keep up the policies that they promised to black people or people in general. Mm. Okay. But then this week she makes an appearance. 
They located Carmen San Diego. <laughs> and do you know where I first saw her at? Charlemagne the God show? Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> I, oh no. And you and I'm I'm telling the truth. This is gonna sound crazy. She appeared in the shade room. What? Yes, this week. She had to talk to us. What do you think she had to talk to us about? I'm glad that y'all don't even know about this. So what do you think Kamala uh -oh. had to talk to black people about on the shade room? Oh, I, Please tell me. I, I thought we were talking about the Charlemagne thing where he asked her, where he asked um, who's the president. <laughs> oh, never nope. mind. I, shade room? Why, why what do you shade think, room? What do you believe is the pressing issues in black America? Like, what do you think she, she came on to talk about? And this is not made up. Just like when I talked to y'all about Biden trying to introduce the shots for shops and he wanted people to get vaccines in the barber and hair salad shops and it was true. This, what I'm about to tell you, is true. Research it. What do y'all think she wanted to talk to us about? Because she, she, she'd been missing, right? Uh, yeah. Trump was a big evil man, so we had to get her in because she, she, she was at least somebody who might try to look. What do you think she had to talk to us about? Please somebody tell me. She had to go on the shade room to uh, congratulate Megan the Stallion on graduating. I would have, I would have been happy. When I tell you she got on there to talk about lead pipes, lead pipes, pipes being in lead. I mean, lead being in pipes. Did she specifically talk about Detroit, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, and all them in Flint? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You have to watch it. It is very. I couldn't. Is, I was livid when I saw it. Lead pipes. She was just talking about yes, lead, pi lead yes, pipes. Yes, 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 yes. What yes. about lead pipes and where? And is she like you said? Is it Flint, Michigan? She talking about? Is she? I got so angry. I listened to it for about I think three minutes and I turned it off. Oh, How dare you? How dare you? So, so Soraya is in the comments and mm -hmm. she said, "What do we do when we're stuck with two terrible candidates? Get, get you somebody that. else." <laughs> yeah. You don't have to choose yeah. them. That's the beauty of democracy, people. You can always you gotta, choose someone else just because they're a part vote of a down party. Ballot. You yeah, vote locally. Stop always picking a, a just because you see Democrat and Republican. How about actually pick someone that's best? What if they are not a part of a party? See, it's just too much. Stop voting for parties. Yes, just because if you vote for the right person, it, that's look. But that's just America in a nutshell. It's all about who you know, the hookups, and who we like not because of what they, can, what they do, really can do it's about what the perception of them and i'm not shaming anybody um on their vote i'm not because i know that we have been it's like you know what i'm saying it's, to me shaming somebody on their vote this last election would be like shaming a woman who stayed with an abusive husband when you don't know everything that's going on and you know why she stayed so long right i'm not doing that um but in the future I hope this is an eye-opener. These people don't care about you. None of them. Not like that, right? So stop getting so passionately and emotionally uh, wrapped up, black people, mm -hmm. in certain parties. Mm -hmm. Don't get emotionally wrapped up at all, at any of it. Just look at what they really stand for. Look at their records. Also, when they have something that is that you can get on them for, like they have a scandal, stop canceling them. Hold their feet to the fire. That's when you make your move. That's chess. That's when you make your move. We have to start thinking of it from a strategic standpoint. Stop being emotional. And now, Biden, God forbid, don't wish death on anybody. He looks like something is going on there. I don't know what's going on. He's not here. I don't know. So if, if for whatever reason he can't serve out this presidency, now we have a woman who knowingly doesn't support a lot of the things that we are fighting for, who's, who's going to be in charge, and we ain't even seen her. And she pops up on the shade room. You should be <laughs> assaulted. You should yeah. be insulted, <laughs> in my opinion. All right. Well, she was, she was missing. Well, Biden gave her the task of controlling the border. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a, how are you going to control that? And... These recent articles of her coming out saying how her low approval rating right now is worse than Dick Cheney's, and they're they're panicking right Shocker. now on what to do. <laughs> Are they going to? <laughs> what do you say? Dick Cheney shot somebody in the e. face. EK said, and he shot somebody in the face. He shot someone in the face. Yes. <laughs> That's so and, true. And they're and then so they they're saying because she's a woman or she's a woman of color. 
uh, that's that's the reason why her lower low approval rating is. And no, that's like not you why. Because you 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 trash. You ain't showing us nothing. Right. It's like yeah. It's like they. It's like you know. Hey, Bimo, we we didn't play Madden, right? You know how I many. You know when you beat that one person, they say running back, and that person just take the title and run. <laughs> That's what yeah. happened. They took the title and ran with the shit. Now it's like, yeah. well, what you gonna and, do? It's like and, you just you yeah. can't be saying you. This is. And, come on, come I, I'm on. sorry. I'm, I'm, they, and right now they are trying to put Dick uh, Pete Buttigieg and they trying to Buttigieg. take her. They might try to put Kamala on the Supreme Court or something like that. Oh god. So they they, they they they're like I said they're panicking right now. So I don't for, I, like where has she been and what they gonna do is it's it's amazing to me. But I'm I'm happy that black people are waking up to their trick. Me too. Nah. They learned, they learned, they, they learned from just, Obama. Nah, and, just... and most of them are, are learning from Kamala because first she was black and now she's Asian. What? So <laughs> honestly, be more. I don't think everybody learned yet. I just think now it's like, oh shit, we wrong. But we said this already. I, I know a few. Nah, friends check of mine. them comments on the shade. I room. know, but I know a few. Friends check of... check what people were saying. I said, oh okay, people starting to wake up. Right, me, be more myself. We, we said this shit to them way before the election of last year, and people just looked at us that we was haters, or, you know, we gotta get the boogeyman out. I'm like, yo, the, the, the entire system is the boogeyman, exactly. not just one man. He is just mm -hmm. a sacrificial lamb, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, you're right. I don't want to hear that shit now. It's to the point, like, now where I don't like when people, if I tell you there's a pile of shit on the floor and you step in it, and I tell you way before and you still step in it, I'm not going to help you clean it or get something <laughs> for you. I'm like, oh no, you made that mess. You either clean it or throw it away and get something new. So I just feel this shit is like the Lion King. Remember when Scar took over? Mm -hmm. And Pride Pride Rock just fucking started slowly turn into a away. desert. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what's going on. <laughs> and we'll be, we'll be like, then you have sent us to death. Come on, then so be it. You can't do that. I am the vice president. I can do whatever I want. Hey, you okay. <laughs> The uh, Facebook Live keeps, like, every once in a while going saying it's losing the broadcast um, signal. Uh -oh. But it comes right back. I'm just letting you know in case there's something going on over there. It may not be, though. Yeah. Maybe Facebook. So um, Facebook's in. I'm not showing you dropped rings. Then don't worry about it. It's probably Facebook. Um, Tobias Johnson said something that we're going to go ahead and end this out on. He said, we are going to be stagnant as a country as long as we are a two-party system funded by interest protecting their wealth. That is very true. And if if you really understand that... That's what I mean. Yeah. Stop being emotional. Use your leverage. Get leverage. Use leverage. Understand your leverage. And we have a lot of leverage that we don't use. Next slide. I can dig it. Let's see what the next one is. Mm. How do you put Jada on that? Oh, we're going to get into it. This one is relationship goals or nah. Mm. Ah, oh, this was the year of the relationship gurus, wasn't it? <laughs> First, let's start, my good, my good men. What are y'all's opinions? First, tell me your opinion on Kevin Samuels, and then tell me your opinion on Derek Jackson. If you don't know, Kevin Samuels is a relationship um, personality who has gone viral because he, quote unquote, tells women how it is. A lot of men like him because he'll tell a woman in a minute well you your expectations are too high you really are three darling you know what i'm saying stuff like that um the women get mad they say he's gay undercover i know somebody who knows somebody they say he really is i don't know doesn't matter he's found a niche boom um Derek jackson is also relationship guru who has been viral many times for for many years and he kind of played into women's emotions and I had men telling me this years ago, and I was like, no, he's just nice. And they're like, nah, he's doing this. Well, he really he, he, he really had a moment this year. Um, but they are very, very big in the relationship game. Uh -huh. So, AJ and B, what do you feel about Kevin Samuels? What do you feel about Derek Jackson? Without, without talking about Derek Jackson's scandal, because we're going to get into that after. Shit, well, you can't really do that because the, <laughs> the his actions reflect his his, his true character. But uh, I'm gonna let Be More rock with this one first because my shit is gonna be a little longer. Go ahead, Be More, take it away. I mean, Kevin Samuels, like he's I, you can't like like I told someone like you can't 
talk to a, a Honda mechanic about a fucking Tesla work, <laughs> to work on your fucking Tesla. The man is obviously moist. This, <laughs> and the way he acts, the way he looks, and, and you saw the, the, yearbook, uh, the yearbook picture of him, and it doesn't matter what he says. It's all a scam. Like, it doesn't, like, and people, certain type of men and certain women has been through worse, like, bad relationships. They listen to him. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. they want to feel so hateful towards people and want to feel like they want to put themselves on a pedestal. And when he has these girls on there, it's just like American Idol, just, just to watch someone get, like, American Idol trials, just to watch someone be, like, publicly, like, embarrassed like someone someone being judged and it's just like jerry springer it's like that type of garbage like you're not going to learn anything from him and he's not with a woman so why would they be why would you be listening to a man that don't it's not (laughs) they ain't got the right tools (laughs) that's my thing i don't care that he says stuff it's more of like it's scamming because you're not it's scamming you're you i'm surprised he's not selling anything yeah i'm I'm surprised he's not selling anything but go ahead I think he probably sells like workshops and stuff. Uh-huh. Oh, and he was he his channel was not popping for many years, so he's just started. So he probably will have something coming out. You know what I'm saying? He's selling soon. Uh-huh. Um, Jamal in the comments said, "My man Kevin, let let me know in the comments why he's your man, why you why you rock with Kevin, and then uh, what do you feel about Derek Derek Jackson? B. I don't trust a handsome." Dark skin dude giving out <laughs> advice. That's why I don't. That's why. I don't. <laughs> and he always in the car. I, I was waiting for. But we're not gonna talk about the scandal. But I, I, I never watched any of his videos. But I seen women post him mm-hmm. before what happened, and I knew just the things he was saying. It was like an old trick that we used to do. I used to do. You can just find a a a, a, a damaged woman. And just tell her all the things she need to hear. And that's what men good. told me. You're I was like, no, he's everything. not. Y'all just open were your right. legs. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. What you, right. th- right. you think about Kevin Samuels? I, mean, no, uh, I just think it's funny when people when people hear a reality that they don't like or actual facts, then people get offended. Cause I, I'm here to tell you, like, shit, be more in test of that. If that's the case, then I was Kevin Samuels way before Kevin Samuels was. I don't think that he's trying to be a showcase. I think he's just really telling it how it is and that people can't handle the reality because if you can't handle accountability and the reality of things, of course you're going to say he's this and that. The man ain't moist. The man is just telling you how it is. It's too much. Society is too fucking lopsided. So when a man ain't is not up to a certain attractive standards, it's okay to shit on him. It's okay to say that she's out of your league. Mm-hmm. But if I were to tell a woman she's not in my level, then I am an asshole or I am chauvinistic. I'm a prick. Uh, there are a lot of people out there. are a lot of men and women out there. But let's just stick to, to the women part. I've already said this. This is five, six, and seven women of the world ruined it for relationships, and they <laughs> fucked themselves up because the problem is those type of women are like cars. You think you are a Phantom or a uh, Bentley. He over here wanting to, but, but hallelujah. But, he's feeling you. No, because. Oh, you fine now. No, you uh, fine. It's not even that. A lot of women out there <laughs> think that they're, they're Bentleys and Phantoms when they're really Christ the 200s, not even the 300. <laughs> So all because you have certain or certain type of niggas <laughs> commenting and blowing you up, and then when you do get around a real woman that is on that level, then you get embarrassed, and then now all of a sudden men are trashing you. No, that was you were in a false reality, and then reality hits you, and now you can't take it. That is what Kevin <laughs> Samuels is saying. Because be more, those women choose to get on that show. Yeah, that's the arrogance of them. That's what I'm saying. Society has told women all the time, you're beautiful the way you are. Even if you are, if you got a coral reef of a stomach. Even if you do got two chins. How even if dare you, do, you say that about women when they pushed out babies? Who gives a fuck? That's not our problem. Okay. 
This is this. I was on your side for a little while. No, no. This is what, a no, what no, This is a he man, that. no, woman no, hair. No, it's club. not about I'm that. Next no, to you, right? you know why I say that? Because then when men get called midges or something like that, that's not in their control. Yeah. So, I'm just so what I know, but we're height chasing, or you're 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 shaming me for something that I have no control over. I have look, and for the and once again, women understand the difference between males and men. Men don't give a shit about your wrinkles after giving birth. We understand that. It's called having common sense. Mm -hmm. I will never judge a woman for having children. If anything, God bless you. You still looking good for that? That's that's not the case. I think a lot of women out there, the problem is a lot of women put their ideology or their acceptance of what uh, uh, they should be to ain't shit men. Stop listening to what rappers talk about. Stop listening to what athletes are saying. Oh, he cooking. Stop listening. Stop holding your standards to those motherfuckers. Because real men don't like them assholes either. Because real men have, we have mothers, sisters, aunties. We don't, we don't want you to get disrespected because we, that's going to make us look bad. Yeah, you but come on. Y'all praise, y'all say women should stop listening to rappers or whatever, whatever. Yes. But... Y'all praise the IG models. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. Men no, let's, let's, no, don't. let's no, be real. No, men lust uh, after the IG models. See, we that's what women don't don't, don't know how to differentiate. I can, yeah, thank you. No, no. But no, hold on. What would you say, B? We have a segment on our show called Cheeks of the Week. Thank you. Yeah, Cheeks. I, just because show... I like Cheeks of the Week doesn't mean, but there's a difference. All we're doing is just showing something that's already posted out there. We didn't go into her personal <laughs> pictures and like we didn't, oh, we didn't open her man. file. We're just searching shit, and it's for entertainment. Once again, there are like women. Are they feeling you in the comments. Yeah, I know because I'm, keep, because I'm keeping it a buck. It's like this, just and that's where a lot of women fail Don't to realize. At 100. This is why a lot of women fail to realize, and this is what fucks them up and gets them fucked over at the end. Just because a man wants to fuck you doesn't mean he respects you. He's giving you dick, not respect. And women, because they desire attention so much, everything is good. Well, at least I'm getting some attention, and it's like it doesn't work that way. Just because he's trying to fuck. So those IG models, and half the time, real men know that's not what they look like. I just went to a, a sex post thing with my girlfriend. I've seen half these women that I've seen on IG. I'm like, uh, wait a minute. Okay, oh, now I... God. Yeah, I'm sitting there. Bait and switch. Yeah, I'm sitting there. Bait and like, switch. I've seen certain women where I'm like, okay, what the fuck? Are, is that even you? So that's what I'm saying. All Kevin Samuels is saying is that... The, uh, the, and I've been saying this for years, way before him, because if anybody knows, my favorite word is accountability. The accountability, especially in the black community, is, is so unbalanced, it's fucking ridiculous. When a black man tries to tell a black woman, yo, what you doing right here is foul, it's mind your business. But if I do some shit, you all have been my shit. Why why are so, you going so hard, Lindsay? Lindsey said they be out here shaped like balloons filled with oatmeal. They, <laughs> Why you being so hard? No, but it's a fact because I'm just saying, like even in Holly, even in Hollywood, when they those comedies where men are considered like losers or fat guys, we laugh at that. But we better not laugh at certain women scenes because then now all of a sudden we're being too hard. So society will tell you a woman you can be ugly but still be valued. A man, if you ugly, you just ugly. <coughs> yeah, but. You just ugly. The reason why there is an imbalance in, um, imbalance in that area mm -hmm. is because of the patriarchy. So men control so much. So women are treated that way and told that because women get beat down in other areas. So it's to, it's to build up confidence. And I love how they we talk about the patriarchy, but a lot of women depend on that shit too. So yeah, you you, no, 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 no. But here's the, that's the, isn't that a contradiction? So it's the same thing when a woman says she's independent, but you want a man making six figures. Which one is it, boo? So you 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 want to you want to be independent, but you want me to make this type of money, and you want me to sustain this type of perception. No, yeah. because okay, if I'm if I make I'm gonna be real. If I'm a dude with millions of dollars, you better not ever get fat. You better always maintain a certain weight. City boys up five thousand. He ain't he ain't come to play today. No, you better. He ain't come to no, play today. Because I'm tell you right a, a now. Of, like I said, I said the five sixes and sevens ruined it because. Uh, here's a red flag, fellas. If she thinks that she looks like a certain female celebrity, no, you don't. Just remember that Hottie from Flavor of Love thought she looked like Beyonce. That's my point. <laughs> that is my point. Just Who lied that. to you and told you this shit? 
Because first of all, you don't because you would have been discovered a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Like a chick said, um, and this, oh, she said, what did she say? She said um, she favors Evan Mendez. I looked at her like, maybe Steve Mendez. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, because you got women out there who really, because they're, they're local town hotties, that's cute. But you go out to the big cities, you was a nine in your hometown, then you get out there, you a four. Mm -hmm. when, so, is this, when is this Kevin Samuels uh, scandal coming? Okay, so oh, let's talk about the scandals, though. Let's go ahead and bring it oh, back in talk about the scandals. But the Kevin Sam Samuels scandal is coming soon because he's irritating people, and he getting so close to Brittany Renner or whatever is going on. Now, Kevin Samuels is basically a lot of men support him because of, they feel the same way that AJ feels. I've talked to a lot of men. They're like, man, this, we, you know, come on now. We finally got somebody who's at least, you know... Derek Jackson. Derek Jackson. And I am a, saying it, and I, and I have apologized to every man that I was like, nah, he ain't. People were saying he's simping. He's and a, I was like, y'all just don't want someone no, we, telling women to respect <laughs> themselves. No, he's just a fucking. I, and no, they're we've been, we've been saw that. I, I, I understand, man, but let me, let me tell that. them what happened. So, you know, us women are, sh you know, sharing it, especially if you're going through some shit. Derek Jackson post. Derek Jackson yep. post. Listen, yep. ladies. Him in the car. Listen, ladies. In the car. Outside his side chick's house. But anyways. Ooh. In the car. Listen, ladies. Know ultimate. your worth. If he don't want to do this. Da -da -da -da. He's a narcissist. He's a da -da -da -da. So he became very, very popular because of that. So basically, the type of... you, Kevin Samuels has a lot of men who like him because he's finally speaking up women there's a lot of women who like Derek jackson because they felt like oh there's somebody finally speaking up mm -hmm. so what we go through because women go through a lot of heartbreak just like men do but um women talk about it more yeah you know so he he found that niche but then this year he had a scandal and come to find out for all of y'all who missed it kevin i mean uh Derek jackson was dirty dicking everywhere Okay, yeah. he had side chick, side chick don't blew it up. He was married, but never would show his wife. Um, relationship guru talking about relationships, but you never really want to show your wife. Red flag. Mm. Definitely missed that Not one. Not necessarily, but we'll no, keep going. No, it is. We'll, we'll keep going with that. If you're, if you're, if you are based on relationship advice, yes, you should be showing your relationship. I'm a, show I'm your a go, work. I'm a go. Yeah. Here's why I'm gonna disagree with that because. I know a lot of bitch made niggas out there mm -hmm. and a bitch made males that will have their wives on Damn. on on a on social media or whatever yeah. and be like the love of my life and be cheating like shit, dirty dickin'. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what. No, no, no. I'm not saying you have to like people who put their spouse or whoever on uh, social media means they're not cheating. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if your brand. Yes. If your brand uh -huh. is selling basketballs, you need to you have better ball. know about basketball. You better be dribbling that month. Right. You and better, you better yeah, talk yeah. about it in your life. Right. But Derek, I, I Wilson. Knew that Where that Wilson at? Where I, Wilson at? Yeah. I, I knew that nigga was. What's uh, wrong than that? I, <laughs> I knew that nigga was ain't shit anyway. Just because a lot of uh, be more said it. There's a lot of men out there who know how to get broken women to say you can be whatever you want to be just right after you let me. You ride the shit out of me. <laughs> you, better, you can be whatever you want to be just after you get to let me get done with you. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he was weak. He was a weak. Those are the type of weak ass dudes anyway that try to be on a woman's side. See, a lot of people. Here's the true definition of a simp. A there's simp. nothing wrong with being on a woman's side. No, by no, the way. no. There's a difference between being on a woman's side and agreeing with certain things than just trying to kowtow to her. Just so she, you seek her approval. A simp is a but man. AJ, but AJ, you, if you, if, if that's your brand, you cannot be cheating. Oh no, you can't we be get doing that. nothing. I, but I've always said fuck that dude. He was a square from the jump. I always knew he was cheating. That's what I'm saying. I knew he was. But phony. you didn't know who the girl was. You didn't know what his his. He, he, no, I'm not sure if he talked I'm, about no. if he was with he, someone. Basically, he or got whatever. he got he got busted out. Yeah. Okay. Then this this man. Decides now it's time for us to meet his wife, and yeah, this man TV. brings him brings her out in the public, and lets that broad as a black woman come out with a bonnet on. Mm. What up? I'm just gonna go weep in the bushes. 
<laughs> but can I say one more thing this was, about this Kevin was their before press we conference? But go ahead. Before we move on about Kevin, she should have came out looking bad. He should, thing, he should not even have wanted her to do that. Yeah, that's after the sca- yeah, after the scandal, the it, the press conference is very important. Very and important. Yeah, hey, that's that's bo- on her. That's on both of them. But no, with Come Kevin, baby, we got to go. Let's wrap this up. Here's another thing about Kevin that I, I love how people choose to ignore. He gets on men too, but we don't talk about that because we're once again. As you said, when people are in their emotions and their feelings, they tend to not. My my motto is don't react. Reflect. We need to see Kevin with Melvin, okay? No, no. My thing <laughs> is, no. He called out dudes before, Kevin like he called out dudes and said, "Yo, you a fat dude with no income, and you want these type of women to approach you." He said that shit about a lot of men. He say the same shit that uh, there are certain things that he said that. A lot of men won't agree with because he said, okay, if you're a man with money, then you need to pay for everything for the woman and you need to handle that shit. So, and I give him credit for that. He does, yeah. No, no, uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that. But see, then those same other ones like, see, men don't want to listen to that. So he holds both sides accountable. And so does Derek Jackson. If you, were, if you follow him, because I used to always say that, he would do videos saying stuff. He, uh, it was the same. But, they, but both they, they're both scammers, in my opinion. But you can go ahead. You're going to have your heart broken just like I was when the Derrick Jackson No, because I, no, I'm listening, <laughs> I listen to the message, not the messenger. Even if Kevin Samuels was I listen gay, to, I'm trying to tell you, the message that Derrick Jackson was saying is not wrong. It is it's wrong. Good, it's, it's no, wrong. it's good for women to have self worth. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with that. Having self worth is different, but I feel what he was saying was manipulative. That's what I'm saying. Exactly, Kevin, but the message wasn't. Kevin was not being manipulated at all. He's just telling you what it he is. is. Okay. He's just saying. I'm going to get off that. No, because he's just, all he is saying is, hey, if you want to, if I, just like my man, one of my men said this, if you want something extraordinary, you better be extraordinary. So at the end of the day, all he's saying is, stay in your lane. Go with what what you know in reality is what you can really get. While while the reality is that far too many women mm-hmm. are Bob the Builder out here. There it is. So he no no, he's saying that as if oh you shouldn't be trying to do this you 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 don't even bring nothing to the table you whatever whatever, as if a man wouldn't want you. But women do that all the time. What? Women date down all the time. Can you introduce a couple of them? Right. I was about to say. <laughs> my, and don't, my engineer said, can you no, introduce and, a couple and don't of them think, to me? And, 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 there's a di- and there's a different circumstance, extenuating circumstances of why they do that. Certain men who date down, they date down like, yo, because I already know if I go to this level, this is going to be some bullshit. Other women who date down is because their car note is late. Other women need a place to stay. I ain't He's not dating. If, hold on. Your car note ain't, ain't late if you're dating down. No, you got no, it all messed no, up. No, no, no. Right. It gets sugar days. Right. Because the sugar days. That's not dating down. I'm talking it. about the hobo sexuals who right now oh, we talk, are, we can are talk linking about up too. with women. We can talk about that Just too. because it's cold outside. Or it's both, both oh, ways, absolutely. But, you know, uh, yeah, it goes warm. both ways. But at the same time, at the, what you just said, though, it's just like, all right. But typically, though, who has more options, men or women? Men. Men have more Are you options. Sure? I believe so. Are you sure? Yes. Vagina is like Jordan. They can. They're never going to be outdated. You can. Uh, you can re-release. Men Jordan. have more options. There's, no. there's men more of, men. Men of. There's uh, more women. Yes, but at the same time, who is more pickier? Women are more pickier. All right then. So, uh, the only time a man has more options if his wallet outweighs anything else. Yes. Ex- yes. Because when, yes. So, when but a them. woman can be a three and still get fifty twos and ones. A man, like it don't work that way. That's like if we gonna have to agree to disagree. We are gonna move okay. on. We gonna talk about the one that really gets their boxers in a bunch. Mm. Jada motherfucking Pinkett and Will Smith. So. We had, everybody knows the whole August Alcina scandal, whatever came out. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the rumors that they have an open marriage and whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this year, what Mm -hmm. I saw was the media and people tried to villainize Jada. I am one of the people who do watch Red Table Talk, who have watched it from the beginning, and I think it's an excellent show. Mm -hmm. An excellent show of three generations of women giving their sides. I think that Will and Jada, I'm going to go ahead and start this, have amazing children. I know black people call them weird. If you really looked into those kids, why would you not want your kids to be like them? Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't talking about like, oh, uh, if you feel like, oh, um, Jaden shouldn't be wearing a dress. I'm talking about them, their spirit, 
they are really good people. Like if you really research and, and know what they do in this world Absolutely. and what they are. So I'm going to just get that out of the way. But I'm a person who watches the show. So I sat back and watched. They would take like little clips of her saying something. And I mean, the men was like, see? She, let's see what she doing, man. Will just leave, man. Just leave, Will. She don't have no respect for him. Da, 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 da. They felt like Will is a victim because of the August Alcina thing and because of him with the tears or whatever, whatever. Which I halfway believe that part of it was to get her show popping, but that's whatever. I think she had a thing, but I think Will coming on there and doing the eyes that he's watering was to get the show popping. That's what I think. Mm. But. Also, I'm one of those people who I, I like to read. So I just read. I just read Will Smith's book, his memoir, which is very excellent. The way that Jada is villainized and by men, black men, in this country, I think needs to be talked about. I don't think she has done anything wrong as far as speaking on her relationship because that's her brand right now, and Will is agreeing to it. So on one, on one side, y'all say you don't want women to be too independent and whatever, whatever. You want men to be able to lead. Isn't he the leader of his house? Isn't he putting himself in this position to talk about these things? Why are y'all men so upset at Jada? Let me hear it. It's not like she took him on Springer. She didn't take him on Jerry Springer. My thing is with the whole situation, first of all, I don't give a shit about him. Uh, I don't ever do compare one of the goals of famous people. First of all, I don't know them. That's the key. That's my. That's that. Their life, not mine. And uh, we're not even seeing all yeah, of it. Yeah, I don't care about that. I just care about your profession. Thank you, Soraya. I care about your profession, and as long as you're not hurting anybody behind scenes, like children or anything, that's the problem. And that now that is also a cultural problem. These goals, the, the, like yeah, establish your own goals. If I'm in a, when, you know, as me in a relationship, my goals is all us. I don't, I'm not going to compare to other people. So with the whole situation with the Jada and, and Will thing, it's not about that. It's just, it's certain shit on, for both, on both of them that's annoying. Uh, it's just certain things where I get it. You're trying to just, you're trying to create a brand and get people to I buy it. I feel like it's more to, yeah, to, to I, get I, people to watch it because it wasn't as popular. That's my person. My personality is different from theirs. So I'm a person where I I, I do like a lot of uh, dis discreet uh, privacy. Because yeah, you're more private. I don't want that shit out there like that because, but at the same time, no, Jada does have certain things where it's like, I think that's unacceptable. Let me ask you this, Mona. You wouldn't want to be with a man let me just say this. What if I always brung up a woman that I felt that got away? That, you know, we had this bond and this love. Let's talk about that, it. Because you know I'm you know, a Tupac fan. Let's talk about I, it. But yeah, but at the this, same, this is a big one. But at the same time, that is disrespectful as fuck. Because no woman would ever want her man to talk about, I'm in a relationship right now. I will never tell my woman or, or talk to her about uh, some other girl that has my heart or that had it. And be talking about shit like that for years. I don't care, if we, even if we were friends, so that's where the boundaries need to stay. But see, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's because you've listened to the media. Jada and Tupac never said they had an intimate sexual relationship. We get that. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me finish. We let me get it. Let me, let, me, let me take this home. Never said that. We all know they probably did, right? We feel it. They had a connection. She talks about him when asked, just like Will Smith does. Well, Smith is actually on record saying he was intimidated by Pac because he had certain things together yeah. because... Yeah, he said it on The Breakfast Club. Because he was a rapper. He was a rapper, and Will Smith at that time was seen as kind of like a corny rapper. Tupac mm -hmm. was Tupac, and he was the persona, so he felt, like, intimidated by him. He's talked about it. He's brought it up. Yeah, he has. She has said they had a special bond. People are not meant to be owned. If she had a special bond with somebody she grew up with, she did. She has never said, I'd rather be with Pac. It, she has never said, Pac's dang -a -lang was it, it, out of this world. I she has that. never done none of that. So when y'all say, how dare she do that, it's crazy. All right, then. Hold uh, on. Okay. Hold on. So men get upset at it and say, what? That, that don't make no sense. And uh, a woman would never stand for that. Nobody would do that. That's a lie. We do because what? Dame Dash talks about Aaliyah all uh. the time. 
Mm-hmm. His wife, Roxy, mm-hmm. Raquel, sorry. Just had a baby. Just had a baby. Mm-hmm. She also says she feels in Leah's spirit. She supports him in that. He does it on a level that Jada has never come close to. But nobody talks about that. Well, first of no, all, no, most no, people no, don't no, give no. a shit about How many Dame letters? How many I letters? do. He's amazing. Jada's yeah, we said way. you, but not for the most part, who are people really going to? But he's a celebrity, is yeah, what I'm saying. But who are people going to focus more, Jada or Dame Dash? The oh. same guy that people said, <laughs> okay, you were too much of an asshole, and that's why The Rock in them is gone because of you. Jada and, and Will are the bigger story. Nobody they, gives a shit they, about no Dame. No, they give they give a shit about they don't Dame. give a, they shit, give a about, shit about Aaliyah. They give a shit about they Dame. They don't give a shit come... because it's a man doing it. No, That's they don't give a shit. You. It's because it's Dame. That's no, it. it's no, Dame. No, I, I, no, I, no, no AJ, you're wrong. AJ, I fuck with Dame, no. but Dame is not on the level of a Will and Jada. That is no, a better story. And I'm not saying that, but you're creating a straw man argument. I'm not saying that he is no. on the level of Will Smith, one of the biggest box office okay, stars of all time. Okay, what's Dame's wife's name? Dame's wife's name is Raquel. Okay, but. And his son's name is Buggy. But who else? Okay. Okay. I mean, wait a moment. Yeah. I, what are okay. you talking about? Take a census out there. You think any uh, most who you think most people gonna know whose wife is? Uh, Dame's wife Mr. or Jada and Will? It, it, that's talk, what I'm saying. Talk to him, B. No, they talk are to him, B. they are the bigger dynamic story, so they're gonna go after that more. But for me personally. I hear you saying that, but at the same time, that that's a weak uh, argument. Because no, it's not. It's a weaker. It's a weaker argument because, as you just stated, you just said Aaliyah died. Yeah, they asked. They, they have Aaliyah's shows all the time. Aaliyah, they, Dame has been on major, but, uh, major but shows about here's, Aaliyah. Here's where the weakness is. Who Aaliyah, are you and, about? Aaliyah and Dame dated. Didn't Jada, didn't you just say J- Jada Exactly, never, which just makes it worse. No, it doesn't. It, <laughs> yes, it, it does. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't because they actually had a true relationship and she's gone. And so, he's still, okay. But, but with, with Pac and Jada... It's like, okay, if I'm Will, it's like, if you fucked him, you fucked him. Just say that, but don't say that we had this platonic, holy relationship when, it, if it was more than that, it feels more deception behind the Pac and Jada with Aaliyah and Dame. It's okay, hey, because it's the same thing. When but someone still, dies tragically, still telling, that you were with the still, love. Yeah. No, because you know like why be more. I give Hold on, let, let be more talk. What'd you say? But it's still broadcasting your uh, affection for someone that you're not really with. But exactly, you with I get right that. Now. But once again, yeah. that, those they're both dead. No, they're not. But they but both, but one is more clear. One is more clarified. I dated this one. It's not no. Oh, Maybe they really didn't date. We don't know that. I get what you. You're saying. you can't get mad at somebody about something that you no. think that they've never. No, confirmed. but no, but <laughs> did did Jada or not say that we had a platonic friendship? Yes, they both have okay, always said but that. But there's a difference between someone who died and you had a platonic relationship than someone that you were in a a relationship with. That would be hard to get over. Just like Selena and uh, Chris. Chris, he. Got remarried, and he, he even said that was my soulmate. There's a big difference. That man lost the love of his life because he had someone that he was intimately involved with spiritually, See what I'm saying? physically. When it no, comes to a woman, no, it's different. There's a you're, difference. you're proving my point. No, I'm okay. not. Yes, you if are. If anything, once again, if Jada would just come out and say <laughs> we, we we had sex one night and I wasn't the same member since she, that's she's different. not going. She, she, All right, then maybe she didn't have sex. Okay. I think maybe they did, but we don't know. But that. that's my point. Okay, but we don't know that. But as a person in a relationship, I would not feel comfortable with you always bringing that up, and. You're, okay, so you'd if, feel comfortable no. if you really knew they smashed, yes. and you really knew that person yes. was in love with them. Because I would bring, know, bringing them up all the time. No, because, but don't bring up your friend. Right, don't bring them up. Right, because if, if, <laughs> if, if they're just a friend, then why do you need to carry on that? Because way? they had a special connection. Special connection. They both. How she, come? One of the reasons why Jada is who she is and why she went to California is because of Tupac. I get that, but the like, same, come on. But see, here's where the dynamic changed. With women, it's always a special connection. It's entanglement. It's something of, of something of another trajectory of life. <laughs> Men, we don't have that. No, y'all just dumb. No, we, and y'all say no, stuff. No, we call it how wait, it wait, is. Wait, if wait, I had a friend I, that I used I, to want to smash my, back uh, in the day, then I would. Can I give my uh, disagreement with Jada? Okay. I didn't really get to say it, but how, yeah, it's just. Uh, the coming out with the it's like a, it's like Tupac and her coming out with a new letter every year or something. <laughs> Where are these letters coming from? 
I'm not gonna send no letter to someone that I haven't that I didn't smash. She never did it for years. That's what I'm saying. Y'all are wrong. Y'all are letting them. Did you she see, never did it for years. Did you see those papers that she did not talk about? And, and, did you see those fucking papers? Those papers look she's fresh as shit. Type of, she's the type he of also like, he also put he has a poem book that was published many years ago, which is where this poem comes from. Okay. And there's a poem um, in there about Jada Pinkett. Like, the, hey, those papers were fresh and white as no, shit. No, it was stuff that we already had seen. That's my point. Except for the one thing that nobody had seen, the letter. Yeah, That was I, new. It, I, it was based, she released it because it was an anniversary, it was a special, right. like, y'all ain't gonna sit here and so paint did, this woman she, from the DMV let me, as a, let me she's not from the DMV, she's from Baltimore. There's a difference. There's a difference. I'm claiming them today. She's from Baltimore. She's from Baltimore. There's a difference. And she, I feel like she's the type of woman, like, she, you can't control her. And Will Smith knew that. And Will Smith, those are the type of women are dangerous. But that's who he chose. No. And, that's, and they said they ain't never getting divorced. It is what it is. Y'all gonna have to accept it. No, because at the end of the day, for me, do you, uh, I'm gonna ask you, this, because there, do you know what every man wants out of a relationship other than just love? Because this one... <laughs> I mean, that's true. That true. Men today. with money, that that's true. <laughs> but do you know what we, what men really want? That 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 coincides with love as well. This is the number one thing that any man wants their woman to do. Because and and we were respect. So you know, that's I'm glad you said. But you're that. y'all are taking it as disrespect. This man is literally signing up. He's on the show all the time. I know y'all only see like little clips, but he's on there. This is a family show. Mm -hmm. He's on there a lot. It's, he's. Oh, no. So Will Smith is is the biggest, maybe arguably the biggest acting actor of all time. I don't know. Huge well, star. I don't, I don't know about all that. I'm My saying, I'm saying he's one of the biggest there. of all time. He's up there. Yeah, he's best. He there. has the discipline to do that, but he don't have the discipline to tell his wife no. It's not. Maybe he, maybe no, he like it. But no, that's not necessarily true because just because what we see in the public don't mean it's the same in private because Will just came out and said everything that y'all think y'all know about me in the public is the exact opposite. So, and once again, you don't know what the manipulation that people can do. See, this is where I love how uh, society, once again, it's a society has backwards things. Like, women can't just be as manipulative as men. It goes both ways. Both sexes can be some manipulating people. I suggest everybody who has a problem with Jada um to to really actually research when these stories come out but really 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 read will smith's memoir uh, and if you can't read it listen to the audiobook it, it will explain a lot of um things about him and stuff i learned but um read that because i i feel like jada be getting a bad rap and i'm not just saying that because a woman i feel like there's a lot of misinformation um i definitely if, think if someone if someone tried to do something for my birthday or some he tried to do something for her birthday he got all her, like, he did, like, an ancestral, like, background mm -hmm. or something and, like, brung people for her birthday, and she hated that. She, like, and that showed how much he was trying to do so much for her, and she didn't really appreciate it. And that's the type of relationships that, like, you do so much for a woman, and they don't really accept it. That's... But you don't know the background of that, because I have been in a relationship before where everybody thought this person was the, oh my, oh my God, the sweetest person, the greatest person, whatever, whatever. Come on, Mona. But, he worked for the post office. Nah, but you don't know what... He go to people church? People can be very manipulative, <laughs> and it will appear as an amazing grand gesture. Mm -hmm. But if this person doesn't know you, or doesn't isn't attentive to you mm -hmm. you have to sit there in front like you love this gift knowing this this don't have nothing to do with me like why would you i get that so you can uh so, apply... so I, don't, I don't i won't say nothing about her gifting and her being upset about that no, i don't no. know well you can apply the whole thing about this so-called Pac and jada platonic relationship bullshit for all that we know that it was a, a smashing get a smashing thing on and on one person got in their feelings because I look at it like this. I feel now I could be completely wrong. This is my theory. I feel that Pac always had Jada's heart, but Jada knew in the end of the day he was not going to be the one for her, so she settled for Will. That's just me. She settled for a man that is a big time star. He was successful. He he had he had settled though. Settled. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something yeah. as a Tupac fan and who knows the story. If if you feel so bad about it, then Will Smith should not have what some could call prey on a woman while she was mourning the death of the person she was closest to. He pursued her 
and wooed her while she was vulnerable and attached to that man. But wait, didn't so, she? No, no, no. Didn't she? Let's meet, talk about but, accountability. But didn't she meet Jada yes, on the she, set she of, never, of the Fresh Prince? She never she would date him. She would I, never I date him. I get that, but but you you have to be fair as well. You don't know the dynamics of their relationship that she had when she when she tried the audition on the Fresh Prince. He might have known her and they developed a chemistry then, but as you said at that time, because of Pac, she didn't fully give her heart away until my uh, the brother passed away. So that's what I'm saying. You don't know the dynamics of their relationship because he first met her when she tried the audition as Lisa on Fresh Prince. And we I all don't know, know about that. Play. What I do no, know. That's how they met because what, I'm, I'm not talking about how they role. met. A Nina lot of people Long. in Hollywood meet. I'm talking about when he pursued Jada. No, he pursued. Was when Tupac died. No, he pursued. And she was mourning. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold he pursued on, her Pac, on the Fresh Pac Prince. Pac died September 7th, 1996. 96. I know this. And then they got married December 1997. Yeah, but the Fresh, Prince, the Fresh Prince, when she auditioned They've for Lisa... They said it out their own mouth. But when she I, I auditioned for about. Lisa on Fresh Prince, that was in the early 90s. So they knew People each meet other. People meet all the time. That yeah, has no, nothing to do with it. But, but we don't know the dynamics behind what they were doing. All we know is what, what we saw on the media. But my whole issue with the whole thing is I don't give a shit how strong of a friendship I have with a certain woman. As we are friends, if I get married to someone else, we have boundaries. And... You know, for me, it's just like if I'm like, for, there's certain women that I'm cl close with, but they got men. So I go, okay, I can't text her after nine. I don't want to be blowing her phone up so, unless it's an emergency because it's out of respect of her. Man, fuck that. Oh, we, we, we're, we're bonded for life. No, see, that's an excuse for people to, to justify bullshit. Like when she got on there and said entanglement. Why Only didn't she because say y'all think so. So let's let's let me entertain the fact okay, that okay. maybe she really okay. had a connection, a sexual connection to Pac or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. The other long time story and rumor is that Jada Pinkett and Will Smith are lifestyle. If they're lifestyle, it makes sense. Because the whole crux in the, the core of life of being LS and being lifestyle is that people are not meant to be owned. So I can see Will not being upset. It's like everybody out here is upset and that man is going about his business playing Aladdin if and he, the genie. You I, know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like leave her alone. But if he's if he wasn't upset, then, I mean, I get it, then why would you go on the red table and look like that? It could be fake. Because, because I think he was upset about that because he was embarrassed. That's that my he point. Knew. So if that's the case, then she... But he, he, he agreed to go do a, a red table but once again, and talk about it. But once again, how is it, if, you, if you're going to have this lifestyle, how do you get caught up? We ain't never hear her a woman specifically go out and be like, hey, Will did this to me. So in a way, it's like, Will, you stop oh, it. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Will what has woman? been has Will has been having a, a affair with Margot uh, Robbins. What are you talking no, no, about? No, no, Is that, do we know that for sure or is that alleged? We don't know what you're talking about for sure. No. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, thank you. No, but th no, but that's my, my point <laughs> is you. what you're saying. She's very beautiful, by yeah, the way. Yeah, but what you're saying is alleged. Did Margot Robbie come out and say I had an affair with Will Smith? She didn't sign on to do a movie. She didn't sign on to do the um the new Harley Quinn joint. Uh, we don't know. Was... You're speaking on speculation. You're August, speaking on speculation. No, I'm not. August Alcina, <laughs> August Alcina literally was like, I'm hitting that. And Jada Pink confirmed with it with the entanglement shit. And they have Margo her, her and, Will. and Will agreed to it confirm. But if they had confirm where? Where? all we would have where? known where? was that he made the song and he had the thing. No, but but No, they didn't simple. have to. But as a grown ass man and as a grown ass woman, I feel that. they agreed. How many Male celebrities but, have cheated on women before. Y'all just butt her in your films because no. you see a woman doing it. Stop it, Tristan. Tristan Thompson has fucked everyone. Why the fuck do you... Okay. What, okay, uh, what are you talking about? An athlete nigga with millions of dollars okay. cheats on women. Yeah. Wow. You, hey, See? DJ, you ever heard of not that? Right. I've never heard of an athlete not cheating. I've never heard of that. You, wow, that is a uh -uh. phenomenon. Uh, That's um, a phenomenon. Grant a male Hill. athlete Grant cheating. Hill. Okay, we didn't say all of them, but <laughs> most for the most part. See, once again, just like women, they always think they're, they're going to be the anomaly or they're going to find the anomaly. It's did like, they, did Will Smith? It. Did, they, did Will Smith talk about his lifestyle in the book? No, but he talks about a lot. I arrest my but he case. talks about a lot the of stuff that I don't me. know. Right, I, did, I didn't know. But look, then Margo, until and he talk, he talks about more stuff until, that will make you understand the dynamic. Right, but until Margot Robbie read, write a book and say on the set of Focus, uh, Will was focused on my ass. I don't want to hear. We don't. This is all legend. 
August, I've seen that got a song. August got a song called Entanglement, and then because Jada like I had a so called entanglement when it should have just been. You know what? I fucked this young boy. He came in here with mental problems, <laughs> and he was a friend of my son's. So, which which is we more weird to me because that part is the part. I don't no, like. no, but look, I love yeah. how people the don't fact like. That he was friends. With no, but kid. I like how people, like you said, That's they don't wrong. do their research. But let Will have done that shit to then one of them. We would be killing him. I agree. So I agree. So then, if you know this, then that's my point. But no, Jada, that point has something different to do with, no, with her. The Jada the, thing and Pac. If you fuck the man, Jada, just say it. That's because you want her to say it. Maybe she didn't. But we gotta stop. Let's go ahead and move on. That's like that was that's, a good one. That's I knew like, it was gonna be. That's a like pocket faith them. If if he, if faith, did he get them buns? If he did, I understand because Biggie was cheating. It's cool. Just say that. Don't just tell me it. that he didn't do it. Oh, it's just a lie. When can we just, take a can just we take a shot for uh, your birthday? Yes. Yeah, I'll just finish this. All right. Um, I Here, don't have anything to put a shot in, but we'll take a drink. Here's the honesty oh, of, of hitting so something. Okay. No, we it's still our birthday, one. fool. Sure that too. Birthday. We need more than one. He said it's our birthday, fool. It's our birthday, fool. I like them yeah, Dre beats you got it. on your head. Huh? <laughs> what do you say? Them Dre beats. Oh, you got beats by Dre on his head? Oh, yeah, I found these. I was about to say, are those Dre, Dre beats or DeAndre beats? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> DeAndre All right, we're going to do, do shots for my birthday. <laughs> oh. Here's the Eskimo and, Joe. Let me stop. And your uh, and your son graduating. Graduating oh, college. I already got my, uh, this is a full shot right here. Uh, first generation. That got Chaser in it. Barely, barely. Cause you oh, got the first nah, generation. Oh no! You see that? You took the rest. He made me not. You took the rest. You took the rest. Look, you, you did that. Bumper Clyde. You did that. Yeah, you did that. So my Bumper son, Clyde. my son. Well, he was talking about my son recently graduated college. First time generation graduate and his girlfriend, Odalis. Shout out to Giovanni and Odalis for graduating from VCU. My daughter, Soraya, who was in the comments, she'll be graduating early next year as well. So I'm very proud of them. Every picture I took, I was bawling because I'm. you have no <laughs> idea. Like It feels like your kid is crawling and then, wow. Right. So I'm very proud. A lot of people think I went to college, but unfortunately I was not able to. I've been on my own since I was 15. And um, I am educated, however, but I, I educate myself. Um, but to see him accomplish that and to see, you know, your child, you know, set a goal and get through that is very, 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 very touching. Mama! So, yes. Mama! <laughs> so, so. Mama! 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 Don't do that, y'all. Please, don't do that. Don't do that. I was about to bring up something really don't stupid, do that. But the I scene laugh. From, I'm uh, not gonna lie. That should from be from beloved. Oh God! Don't do don't that. Do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Please don't. <laughs> don't. No, but the color shit. Every time when that nigga goes, mama, 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 I'm like, I cry. I, I don't know. Care. I thought he was slow the first time. No, he was. Speaking. I know. I know. I know. I know. When I got older, I got goofier. As a kid, <laughs> I just birthday. was like, well, what's going birthday. on? Happy I've watched birthday, the color Charlie. purple since I was five. I bet you. And that part when they come and she see the. The, the purple fabric, and he starts going, Mama, I'm like, yeah. oh, let him, let him have free, please. Okay, birthday. Thank you. Shout out to Mr. Shout out. <laughs> so y'all gonna give me a toast, or I gotta toast myself? No, this is a toast to your birthday yeah. and the and the, grad, the higher education graduation of your child. Yep. Uh, God bless. Thank you. Yep. He didn't go to ITT Tech. He went to <laughs> BCU. Or what's that other one? What you doing with your life? <laughs> West, get get Westwood there, College. Jump. They be like, get up, get off the house. Around, you, you ain't doing, doing nothing. nothing. You ain't doing that. <laughs> hey, but for real, they for make real. it easy for you. What's but going no, on? No, for, <laughs> hey, for real, for real, though. Walk away. As, as black people coming up in the early mid two thousands, we needed that guy. What you doing? Get up. Because we were too busy stuck on lean uh, and BET uncut. We we wasn't doing. Right, what's the next thing? Two thousand. All right. We wasn't doing what's shit. What's the next one? <laughs> Thank you for um, Lindsay for the comments. We we got a little sidetracked, so I didn't read them, but I will definitely respond to them later. Um, she was definitely in on that that Jada conversation. Sorry, I missed mm. those. All right. I knew pop. This. <laughs> All right. This segment is called "Run, Nigga, Run," um, mm. which is a quote from Higher Learning. Yeah, Ice Cube. When Ice, y'all know that scene where he's talking about. Yep. You know how they are using black athletes. Well, this year was very interesting. Um, you guys are going to have to take the what's his name, Travis, the one who just signed to the 
He signed to Jackson yes. State. Yes. What's his name? Travis Hill. Uh, Travis? Number one recruit. Uh, went to an HBC and uh, first of all, shout out to fucking Deion Sanders. Shout out to Deion Sanders. He is, I like what he's doing. Uh, he is changing the game as is and for the greatest cornerback of all time, doing the proper thing for the black culture and the community and trying to ed- and not just uh, like teach them how to be athletes, but also I think he's trying to help them be better people. Just you know, like I'm sorry. Shout out to shout out to Prime. Shout out, oh, oh, Travis Travis Hunter. <laughs> Lindsay said, "Get connected to free, get connected for free with Education Connection." She talking about that commercial. <laughs> that shit was my shit. Hey, look, who don't who who don't want to take a dude serious with, with his cap doing like this? What you doing with yourself? Get in here. Get in here. Everything we done worked it for. Go to go to IT <laughs> Connection. It. Go to IT Connection. Okay, so anyways, the athletes. Um, some Simone Biles, of course, I think people were really hard on her um, for stepping down, but I think that was the best choice. But she was recently named Athlete of the Year. Some people were mad at, at that because they felt like she quit. Mm. Um, I think if you understand the background with, oh, I'm sorry, with the um, the whole being molested stuff and people, the interviewers keep asking her about her abuser. I think that it mentally just started breaking her now while she's trying to focus and do the Olympics. Sakari Richardson. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. All right, girl. I was with you. Hmm. I was trying to be with you. Hmm. But I think right now it's best for you to research Usher and how he handled the herpes scandal. He said nothing. That's hmm. what I think you should do. Because they're going to chew you up and spit you out at this point. And you're, you have talent, but you ain't there fully. Like, you're not... You're not even the you're best. Not at, you're not at the Mariah not, Beyonce level to be like, I ain't doing no damn verses. You're, you're not there. Look, you better go on for because Kevin Samuels is about to come back here. <laughs> <laughs> know your level. Know no, your no, it's not even that. It's like, all right, this is what pisses me off about black people. <laughs> We get it. She's that a should be a show. Texas that should be a show. You know, no. <laughs> all we do is uh, because she is relatable, but that that's not always a good thing. That is focus on your fucking craft. Yes. Handle your business there first. And like you said, Usher. You know who is another perfect example? Omarion. That motherfucker. Lindsay, you no. Come, Lindsay says she's taking shots too. No, she don't have herpes. But remember the whole herpes no, scandal okay, with yeah, Usher. To, yeah, about. he uh, apparently this woman said he gave him herpes and, and all that shit. And a dude. And a, and a dude. So Omarion is another one. When they talk shit about him in the Rasby he case, he says, "Yeah, you look. Silence is really golden for a reason. Those those are the media people y'all should pay attention to. Right? Because if, Omarion, if, Omarion, Omarion that shit, he handled that shit like a G. A G. I fuck with no Omarion. one that probably was hurting the fuck yeah, out of him. Yeah, no, but." He's smart because when you don't say nothing, you don't get nothing. Yes. Because if you say something, I can easily twist what you're saying and make it my own narrative. Shikari, if you just focus on your craft, and that is not just for Shikari. That goes for black athletes throughout history. Uh, just be quiet and work. focus on your craft, and that's a But it's that. Today. That's why I named it that. So just be, be quiet, focus on your craft. Is that... Mm-hmm. Run, nigga, run. No, it's not. Is that you're here. No, it's you're not. You're here running. to do a job. That's it. Yeah. No, no, it's not even that. Nothing. It's not even you just that. Just gotta do your job. No, do your job, but at the same time, do an opportunity that's gonna help you rise and get to another level. Like Jay Z, just he rap, nigga, rap, and look mm-hmm. at him now owning different kind of businesses. Rick Ross is the same way, rap, nigga, rap. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal, the nigga played basketball, but now he's a star and he's got. Uh, basically owns a lot of certain franchises. I agree with that. Everybody's so, not Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. So you can't start speaking out about everything. You can't start giving heat back to the media until you have established your stuff. Know your role. Know Colin, your lane. Colin is unique because that was that was a fight for right. Know your different. know your lane, and he was what willing she's to doing take that. and getting the attitude. It's like you not if you was the if okay, Shikari, if you were Simone Biles. If, if, if they had to create mm-hmm. stuff to make you not be able to compete because you were that far ahead of everyone, mm-hmm. you can say whatever the hell you want to say. No, and that's, that's, how, that's how I feel. Yeah, and the thing is... But that, she, you're right. She hasn't paid the cost to be the boss. Yeah, yet. and the thing with the bio situation, I, I, I saw... Now, you know, with the molestation, like, I don't like when the media does shit like that. But at the same time, this is what I will say. And it's not no knock to her. Yeah. But to me, when... P- you, when you, as soon as you step out that door and you put yourself to the public of the world, 
that is typically real for real, real what makes and breaks champions. When Kobe had that that allegation, what did he do? He put that behind, he worked on his personal life, and he got a championship. But Kobe's after. allegation was from somebody who was not in the industry. Simone and all those girls were molested by their gym unit. No, no, and, and, and that's, I'm, that's, and, and that's, that's why I'm not, and I get that. I don't think they should be asking them. No, no, of course not, but at the same time, once again, these are black. You you are a black person. You already, so you already know you're gonna get. Go. You okay. already. That's why I say this is what makes champions. You think Serena and them didn't go through oh, shit? Yeah, they, they did. Remember, remember, uh, people gave the dad shit when that white man interviewed and asked that question. Why do you think you want to be this? Mm -hmm. And people thought, oh, he might have been on the line. No, there was a reason because he didn't want his baby's confidence to be broken. Because yes. as we know, the media can break. And us he that was way. right. And he was right. So that's what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that the Simone, the Simeon Biles thing is the same. It's yeah. not because they are, you know, when you're typically younger, that is a lot harder. But what I'm saying is that's what makes people champions because there's a lot of other celebrities that went through shit, but they, they rise above it. Like you said, Usher, perfect example. That herpes shit, man, when that came out, I was like, dog, how you going to handle this? And the mm -hmm. way he handled it was brilliant because that is a fucking... And nobody thinks about it now. It's, no, but it's, 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 it showed me that and, silence is sometimes yeah, the best and because, way to go. And, and I told people, oh, because he's Usher. No, because he did it right. He didn't say anything. He left it to people's imaginations. To make and, to make people say, oh, he probably was like, that's bullshit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It, it makes you, eventually it's going to, at first everybody's going to talk, but eventually you're going to be like, oh, he just thought that was right. bullshit. Right, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. So you got to know. Right. Um, just like there's a certain thing where somebody said Rihanna, uh, somebody said something about Rihanna and some kind of uh, thing where they said STD uh, scandal. Mm -hmm. Rihanna ain't say shit about that. And for real, for real, people have forgotten that immediately because and it's really nobody's business it, yeah so I, no, I do get it but i i think it yeah. paints the because because now in my head i'm thinking well usher probably was like man i'm not even entertaining that so it's you good. shouldn't because yeah. sometimes when you do there's an old saying even the bible says when two fools argue and somebody look at you then you're both fools so if that you shit argue was not in the, the bible fool, aj <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something. No, it it it, it, it really. It, it. The fuck was that? In? Like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, see, be more. Yes, it is to argue with someone. There's a thing if called see, proverbs. And, there's a thing called proverbs. Never argue so, with a fool because from a difference, people can't tell the difference. Exactly, and then uh, be more. That's why. Okay. Be more. I'm gonna hook you up with proverbs and psalms because proverbs. This is where it is. A wise man has something to say. A fool has to say something. There's a difference. Well, let, let me let me go into that. Speaking of fool. And this this is a little off, but but I didn't put it in the slide. I want to talk about it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I I purposely didn't put it in the slide because I feel like it's a very sensitive topic, and a lot of people passed away, and I want to respect those families. But what AJ is talking about, Travis Scott should pay attention to. You should have not did that Charlemagne Charlemagne the God interview at all. Whoever. I know your lawyers said that, that they didn't advise you to do that. They were right. You're not that articulate to begin with. People lost children. Children. So you should say nothing. This is going to be a huge, huge case. Everyone is getting sued, including you, including Drake. Everyone's trying to blame it on you because it's your show. Stop talking. This Period. Is... Okay, but okay. So let's go back to the football player who signed to the HBCU. Yeah. So the whole world is in a craze. A craze because usually our top black athletes they sign to PWIs and um, very popular PWIs because you know it's just more notoriety, whatever, whatever. Right, right, right. We um, our HBCUs are struggling, very much so, struggling financially. Um, and this athlete, what's his name again, guys? I, I forgot the brother's name. I think it's Travis, Travis Hunter. H Travis, Travis Hunter. Hunter I, keep, yeah. I kept wanting to say Travis Hill. Travis Hunter. He, <clears throat> instead of people, um, him signing where they thought he was going to go, he signed to an HBCU. And this has shook up the game. I think it's a good thing. I think students should sign to whatever and wherever is the best for them. And if he yeah. felt like an HBCU was better for him, I think that's great. I think Deion Sanders is definitely... Um, Deserving of his flowers Thanks, man, yeah. and what he's doing. Prime time, baby. Prime time. <laughs> My man went from rapping and slapping media. But here's the thing where people don't realize and they got to do their research. This isn't 
the first time that this has happened. There's a lot of black athletes that went to HBCUs and they did their thing. We, uh, Walter Payton, Jerry Rice. But he wasn't he the number one draft pick. I no, he's the number one uh, scout, like someone like that's been scouted, recruiting, but. Once again, there's a lot of legends that just came out of uh, HBC. I just gave you two of literally Jerry Rice is considered the greatest wide receiver, and he is. He is the greatest. Some consider him the greatest player. Walter Payton is arguably the greatest running back. Uh, there's a so lot. So why do you think it's, it, this caused more controversy this well, time? Be, well, because, unfortunately, this is business. Those white businesses, they want to use black people. For money, so of course they. I don't understand like that, that, but why but, in the past they, they didn't make super? Well, because it, in the past, once again, you still had black. Um, and then it's, it's, it's social media as well. Social media, media is just the, we're hearing about. Yeah, it more. it's just because once again, uh, Hugh Douglas, Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, uh, Terrell Owens, I think, uh, a few of those brothers went to black HBCUs and they were picks and they were successful. Okay. So I didn't no, know that. It, that but, and that's okay. and, and that's all right cuz I think it's a young gen, it's a younger generation thing. A lot of young heads don't understand and don't know about it because all those players I just mentioned to you haven't played in this game for damn near two decades. Walter Yo. Payton died in the 90s. Uh Jerry Rice retired in like 04. So when you don't that's why it's always good to know your history. Mm -hmm. It's happened before. It's just unfortunately the younger generations of today who are scouting the league don't understand because they they didn't know it was like you were barely alive yeah, cause I, I really didn't know that so yeah you were barely know. alive so and, but isn't this isn't this isn't this what we wanted we always complained about mm -hmm. how we need to black people need to just we can we can have our own league you know what i'm saying we need to invest in hbcus you yeah, know what yeah, i'm saying no, we do and it's gonna take and uh and like you said with this guy the number one pick I me mean, or the number one whatever recruit he yeah. is recruit it's definitely uh, a good look, and but now you can something happen where they they trying to make a rule to make that. It's not, not gonna. Happen. It's not gonna happen. And and I also they trying to they trying to, you know how white supremacy does. They they sprinkle some discredit in, in your shit. They trying mm -hmm. to say that uh, Deion Sanders is um some some somehow he's paying this kid or something like that. Oh so, man! So here comes so the you, you can already see you yeah. can already see that. Uh, it's always at the end of the day, I'm white and I say so. Laws, but right. If, if, if you if yeah. you try to go out the system, they will try to get you. But and oh, like and there are, there are a whole lot of athletes going being coaches at these HBCUs. Like you said, Hugh Jackson, he he's a coach of somewhere else, another school. Um, but we already know that these, these Hugh Douglas. Do you, you mean they, you mean you mean Hugh Douglas? Yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Who I say? Wolverine. Hugh Jackson. <laughs> Hugh Jackson sound like a drink. Let me get that Hugh Jackson <laughs> over there for twenty dollars, right next to the Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's get to the next slide. Thank you guys for your commentary um, on that one too. I gotta, I, I gotta go head out and get ready. But okay. Um, uh, happy birthday. Before you leave, uh, can you tell me what your favorite album of the year is and what your favorite song is? Uh, let me see. Hold up. Oh, my, actually, I don't. I still listen to shit from. <laughs> 2009, that's, that's how I thought about this year. But my favorite stuff I, is like from last I, year I, or year before. I was going to say, but I was going to say that that song that I heard everywhere was, she she's still plastic. Oh, that young blue kid. Oh, and and Drake. they say time you. Still time hey, you. that shit did slap though. I like it too. That shit slapped though. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, and Chloe, I don't wanna Chloe, hold him no, angry. Chloe killed that shit when she said they. Uh, oh, uh, 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 that's fucking when song slap. That was uh, a summer, a so summer jam. Young Blue. Do you have a favorite album, or you just kind of just listen to songs? I just listen to songs. Um, uh, I would say King's Disease too. Definitely, that, definitely was, that, that was the best one, year. hands down. That's the best one, hands yeah. down. Yeah. Um, oh, she talked. Yeah. Hey. No, that was the best. That was the best one, hands down. Fucking uh, the intro. Brunches, he, he talked about DC. Um, oh, DC brunches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we already know all that. We knew that. But thank you so much for tuning in. As far as right. I mean, not man. tuning Happy in, birthday. I'm drunk. For participating, you go yeah. to work, you go ahead and you do real good. And, and okay. follow and follow his Instagram, real Prince of Zamunda, and follow his <laughs> and follow his talk, Prince of Zamunda. Prince right, Akeem, the long lost Prince Akeem's nephew. Be safe going to work. For sure, for sure, y'all be easy. All right. Sure. So, AJ, what is your favorite album? song and album of the year? Oh, no. King's Disease, hands down. King's Disease 2. First of all, Nas did something that 
I was like, man, if you'd have done this years ago, you mm -hmm. would consider. You, I mean, he's on a J level, but as an artist, he would be on that level yep. as well. He picked the right beats and the right, the right artists. Whoever, whatever. He person, brought Lauren Hill he out. Everything. Hey. Like, special, the intro, it took me literally 20 minutes to get past it because that shit slapped. Special. The, the intro was just in the lyrics. And then, of course, Death Row East. Yes. He, he talked about the GOAT. This is the guys. And all that background story. Yeah, like, people, I was like, oh my God. This, Pac is so great. Motherfuckers still got to talk about him. That was the Pac. That's why he the go. He going. Everybody has to talk about uh, Pac because that's Death Row East was was one of the best songs on there. Mm -hmm. um, Moments was great. Uh, the Bible song was nice. My, my joy is OG talk. I yeah, love that OG song. talk. Every song on there was was great. That was the best album for me because it was complete. He, it was. I was like, wow, because a lot of people didn't think he could get better than King's Disease, and I'm like, mm -hmm. the, I'm like, oh no, he can do better. And then I have to say, it, the closest other one after that was the Drake album. That's not to say by much, because that's not even Drake's best work, but it was actually pretty good. I wasn't feeling this Drake album as much. Okay, so my picks would be mm -hmm. um, King's Disease. As far as efforts this year, I really rock with that album. Mm -hmm. There's other albums I love. I love anything Money But Bag Yo puts out. I will just say that. Mm -hmm. he's, he's really being consistent. True. Um, <clears throat> but King's Disease, because it just got me so hype. I was like, what? Yeah, like, King's what? Disease, get, um, get you right. But, you know, the biggest albums of the year is arguably, but it's Donda and CLB, right? <laughs> no, Donda, we're, we're going to talk, <laughs> talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Take what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Take what you want. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. It just looked like an action sequence of a satire movie. No, dun, listen. Dun. Listen. CLB, I was kind of underwhelmed. Drake, Drake to me has never put out a horrible trash album. Right, right. But it was more more underwhelming. Like, okay, my favorite Drake album is Take Care. That's just who I am. Right? Take care. Uh, it's my that's, it's that's my what, personal favorite. Take care. That's I feel like that's most most people. They but they, they feel like that's his classic album. I feel like it's a classic. Um, other one like views I rock with, but it's like underwhelming a little bit. That's how I felt about this album, me personally. Right, right, right. Donda, to me, I feel like Kanye deserves his flowers for that album. And the reason why is because I know everybody's like, what, huh? First of all, he tried to do the whole Jesus of King thing before, mm -hmm. and that album was trash. I don't have a problem saying that. I'm talking about I love you like Chick-fil-A, get my whatever that song was. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Okay. But the Donda album, Kanye, and we, we're not going to see it yet, but it's going to happen. I used to be a youth leader in church. I used to be really heavy in the church. My biggest issue with Christian music was that the beats sucked. When they rapped, they rapped like they were in 1989. <laughs> what I believe Kanye did with that album was showed people with the right formula, you can make really amazing music that's spiritual. So for that, I give him his flowers. Um, that song, we went, we went, we went, we went, we needs yeah. Jesus. I'm sorry. Lord, hold on. That that album, if you listen to it, if you take out whatever you feel about Kanye, if you feel like just sonically, he created a whole new genre. I'm trying to tell you this. People aren't going to jump on yet, but in three, four years, watch what happens in Christian hip hop. He really did. So I give him his props. I think the album is very good. It's definitely not college dropout. It's not late registration. I don't even really listen to Christian music. So I just try to listen to it with like a... Yeah. Um, but I think he did very good. I think he has some filler that he, sh he shouldn't have had on there. Like some of the... Dun -dun 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 -dun. Like I, don't, I don't need to hear that. Sorry. Mm. I'm sorry you lost your mom, but we don't need to hear the chanting. Uh, it's just kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, um, I but I think... Him putting other artists on and showing how Christian music could be different, we gotta give him props. I mean, I give props for effort, but overall, that album, man, like Jail Tonight is the is the best one. I still laugh at that. Guess who's going to jail? Tonight? I think Jesus God is the Lord is better than that song. God gonna post my bell tonight, boy. If you niggas out there in the streets, I bet you better not live by that, cause God might be like, yo, you need to be in jail. <laughs> yeah, but then if they're not living by that, they're living mm -hmm. by. Um, 
Fuck what you heard, God blessing all the trap niggas. That's not that's not true. He's not blessing y'all. You're not, actually going to jail. I, I, I hear you, but <laughs> that's what's happening. Hey, go to jail, but just entertain me at the same time. I'm gonna but shit. I'm just saying, like, oh, I get it, but at the same time, I'm sorry. I need my gangster shit. I've been look. I'm sorry. But that's not what this album was. This I get album it, but was, it was a Christian based album. You I never hear did you, but shit. I still wasn't impressed. I, I look, just because I you, was. Just, even though that's not my genre right, that I was And I, I, I was tell impressed. people, just because you can rap about the Lord don't mean it's gonna be the best. The Lord might be like, hey man, just can, I'd rather hear Caesar Shirley right now, my man. <laughs> Thank you. You just stick to this. Just just can you give me college dropout again? Can you give me my beautiful dark twisted fans? What we'll I'm gonna tell you, y'all mark my words. We'll never see that again. Buddy. Right now, people aren't recognizing it. I don't. In want a to couple of years, it. that I'm serious, people are gonna look back on that album and be like, "Wow, he really yeah, it's certain he albums, created a yeah, new genre." It's a lot of albums that are ahead of their time where you're like, "Oh shit!" Like I'm trying to think of an album that was ahead Kid of his time. Kid Cudi, Kid see Ghost, that nobody ever talks about. Kid see Well, that album was slept on just because. It was talking about mental health, and I was yeah. telling people but I think that it's ahead was ahead of its time. Yeah, it's way ahead of its time because uh, the song "I Feel Free." I was mm -hmm. like, I like that because it's just we have to be real. Unfortunately, as the culture, and I hold the the culture accountable, we thrive off negativity. Mm -hmm. Just like how you were talking about the verses, a lot of people didn't know about the verses until they saw the Busy Bone fight, and I'm like, it, it was. Come on, y'all. We can do better than mm -hmm. that. It, like, don't don't watch it just because you saw a fight. Watch it because those are two classic uh, artists showing you that music. You know their 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 skills. Like, unfortunately, th that's where we're at right now. And like you said, twenty twenty one was actually kind of weak because, uh, of course, King's Disease hold it down. But oh. My daughter said, NBA young boy had the best album hands down. This is what the younger generation I mean, and, and, and there's no... And, I'm and, not into NBA right, young boy, and, and that's but. my thing. For me, certain people, if, if that's your thing, I get it because that's just how it is. Like, that once upon a time, Kid and Play was considered the standards of hip-hop. And then when the 90s came, niggas was like, I don't want to hear that. that <laughs> Baby, it's all right. Nah, I need to hear it. I'm Ain't gonna hurt like, nobody. Exactly. We was like, yeah. We're just dancing, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> we're through with that. Like, I want to hear, woke up quick at about noon, just thought that I had to be in confidence soon. Mm -hmm. I need that. Don't nobody want to hear no, baby, it's all right. I want to hear that, though. She said, The House is Burning by Isaiah Rashad was slept on. Top three for sure. Uh, He's I an art, I, art yeah, I, I, I didn't heard feel it. about him. It was all right, but top three, no. It's, see, the thing is, and unfortunately, you know, we came up back when R&B was. I know. That, that 90s and the early 2000s. There was an amazing breakdown. I'll try to find it for you. And Please, send it to, you. Send it to me. Yes. Amazing breakdown um, on the Joe Budden podcast about why are the R&B girls just, the R&B men can't even compete with the R&B girls right now. No. And he called Tank. And Tank broke down why what's happening is happening. And it was, I had never thought of it. But I'm, I'm going to send it to yeah, you. Yeah, please. It so good. I, it's, it's different now because, and I like the fact, that, but I do like the fact that the women are still keeping it alive because that's a beautiful thing. I mean, he, remember, made, a, he made an amazing Right, we thrived off the R&B in the early 2000s because after the gangster shit in the 90s, we wanted things to chill. Like, all right, I'm tired of burying people. I want to talk about love again. No, the problem is nobody is singing in a desert. Yeah. Nobody sings with leather on. We we definitely need a Joe to see bio. Project. We need it. Yeah, we need we this. We definitely need that. But in the in the when we in our era when we came up, Everything. a man did not care. That that song opens and he says it's been an hour since yes. you've been gone. Look, and that's too long. So come back home. Let me tell you, it's different now. Look, it's like right. Yeah, we can let pop pills and we can have right. sex and we, you ain't my girlfriend, but don't tell nobody. Because unfortunately, they was in love. We're in an era now where it's sexually confused men that Very. don't want to know, that don't know what they want, and that's a whole other segment that I won't get in. But and women, yeah, and women too. It's a, it's all about a fashion identity. Is sexuality has become the identity, and that's mm -hmm. wrong. But back in the day, it was like, first of all, one of my favorite songs, B More used to make fun of me. <laughs> Prince Moon say this was my anthem. There's a meeting in my bedroom. That was my shit. Um, oh. So, so what did he say? Because they gave instructions in back in the day. So, girl, so, he, so girl please don't, don't be, be late. late. Oh, and I <laughs> fuck with Pretty Ricky. Leave it up to you. Oh, Let's Lord. make sex a holiday. Right. And then one of the me. greatest. 
after school, middle school hood songs of all time is I can tell you wanna fuck. You ain't gotta and say it too much. When I look in your eyes, I can tell you wanna fuck. And you ain't gotta call me. Look, no I know there's a few girls that I know that they told me that they lost their virginity to that song. Because I mean like Lindsay said leather pants equals sweaty balls. That's probably why That's they all right it. because back then no women would lick off of them. But basically what that so what you're saying is the same thing that we're saying what you're saying is the same thing that Joe was saying what we're saying. Yeah, it, but Tank well he broke it down and yeah. now I get it. Yeah. I get why we're not seeing that in the male R&B category. Now, don't get me wrong. First of all, I love Black. I think he's amazing. I love a lot of the male R&B, but Joe was saying, he was like, yeah, but Damage by um, Her is a classic. Like, we already know that's gonna be a classic. Like, mm-hmm. that that song is sonically amazing. Yeah. He was like, why are the men, and when Tank bring, breaks it down, and I'm gonna I'm just tell you what he said shortly, but I'm gonna send you that whole conversation. He said, because the women don't have to compete with rappers. And they were like, what? He said, because we have future Young Thugs, Migo, and they all harmonize, which goes back to Ja Rule and 50 and everybody. Right, right, right. right. And Bone Thugs right, and 36 right, right. Mafia. They, it's hard. Now, in order for R&B artists to even get spots on the radio, they have to compete with these people. So they have to make music that is more, I hate to say it, but we know how it is right now, dumbed down. Absolutely. To appeal. And I, and I never thought about that. And we're not going to stay on that, but... I, agree. I think it's very interesting. And I was like, you know what? That's true. I agree. And, and I was but like, we do want that back. I want people yeah, singing about we love. We want nostalgia back yeah. because we want, of course, we don't want no pop because we've seen the results of that. And now it's like, okay, first of all, I want to make sure my fucking artist is going to be here so they don't OD on this shit. But I'm going to tell you, you know who was the biggest disappointment album this year? And it hurt my heart, hurt my soul. Hold on, hold on. Let me try. Let it me. hurt my soul. I like Biggest disappointment. And album. I woke up, I stayed Male, up and, female. Male. And I woke up and I was trying to go to the gym to listen to this shit. Hip-hop, R&B. Rap. I had to basically say, fuck, I got to go to his old shit. So I can rem- so it helps me re- remember he's still that dude. He just, every rapper has a Who? slump album. Every rapper has a slump album. Every rapper has a kingdom come. Yes. Every rapper has a kingdom come. I still rock with some of the songs on kingdom come. I know, I know, but every rapper has a kingdom come where he's like, you know what, okay, he just he just had a moment. I'm going to just give it to you, Rick Ross. That album oh. was so disappointing. I think, the, okay, so it I felt the hurt. same way. It hurt. I think, it you hurt. know why? I think because, the, okay, the last album that he did before that was what? Port of Miami 2. And that was the one that had uh, Santorini Green and everything? No, like that? that is Rather You Than Me. That was 2017. Rather uh, You Than 17. Me was a great album, in my opinion. Oh, it was? It Port was. of Miami 2. Was it, it, that was a great album was as a great well. Album. That's what I'm saying. When I, when I listen to this one, I feel like... Mm-hmm. We're saying that because he he had such great last two hours. Well, he didn't stick to the formula that worked. Where the fuck was Justice League? It's like, where, stick to what... You, you should have been doing that. And then, you know what Ross makes him so great? <laughs> she said she knew you were going to say Rick Ross. <laughs> so, you you knew you know what Ross did that, that most rappers don't know how to do? He can balance gangsta and luxury. Yes. He balanced it. This shit was more luxury than, than gangsta. gangsta. I'm like... All right, I still needed. I didn't hear enough gunshots. I didn't hear enough crack sales. I didn't hear enough bodies getting snatched up. But, but, I didn't but hear on the other hand, on the sold. other hand, I need that. He's, you know, he ain't dealing with none of that. So I get it, but like, fucking just find a way to, to implement that shit. Where it's like I got other people that's doing it. He used to do that in the past. Ross ain't been doing no crack shit since deep, deeper than the rap. So what's that song? I'm just, I, I'm sorry, this is random. But what's that? It's on the last, on the last two albums. No. Mm-hmm. Last three albums. Yes, man. That song he has with dude, and he be like, uh, sorry, Just, sorry, something. I don't argue with the customers. I don't argue with the customers. Oh, you talking no, about? No, no, uh, no, 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 that's that, what him and um, uh, Triple C. Uh, that, that beat. Nobody's that, favorite. Nobody's favorite. Yes. No, that but beat. and here's the scary thing. Mm. Ross did kill it, but uh, old boy killed it when he said. I leave a class on a sweater while I mash on the pedal talking shit to a southern. Got the snatches on call. Don't don't ever um I don't, don't I don't argue with the customers. That shit was good. Oh, what is he I got two bad bitches and they cry for the white, play my cards in the hand and they, they dyke it by, by the night. night. I was like, yeah. damn, I don't lie on my groin. I was like, 
when, but when he said Ali, do you understand? This nigga said I leave a class on the sweater. I was mm -hmm. like, wow, got the smackers on call and the Grammys on empty vaults. I'm like, he said something, something. The bitch don't ever put your head up. I said what? Yes. What? And Ross, <laughs> but Ross killed it too. That, no, that, that song, that, that that song, song to me is nobody's favorite. Rick Ross. Nobody's check favorite. It out. That song to me is the equivalent of. Do you remember? Uh, Renegade and Eminem and Jay. Yes. Jay bodied his shit, but Eminem just took it to a god tier level. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross said, "Gotta let your soul glow with a hundred bullet holes." Mm -hmm. I was like, "And your mama calling out your name?" I was and like, "Mama, mama calling out your name, name, nigga." I was like, <laughs> "No." A lot of people didn't understand that. I'm like, "Bruh, he basically saying your mama is at the funeral home right now, calling for you because you dead." Like, rock. But once again. It was luxury and gangster balance. Like another song on there is Summer Rain. Oh, that's a good one too. Cause how he mixed SWV, but it was gangster mm -hmm. and luxury. When Ross is at his best is when he has Justice League, the beats, and the, the persona story. You see, the story was way out of balance. Little Havana, great song. That should not have been the best song on there. When Willie album. Falcone, when like I said, when your hits, like the commercial shit is your best. That's not a. That's not. That's not an artist. So Rick, come on back Rick, home. Rick, go back to Justice League. I don't give a shit what happened. <laughs> you go to Justice League. If I don't hear Justice League, Justice League, that's not a good album. Come on back. And home. I need a balance. I need a Coke sale, but a, a jewelry buy at the same you time. I need this shit. Look, who we don't? We don't. We don't go on though because we're running over time. Yeah, like go I ahead. Said. Yeah, I need that Ross. Get that All right. back. The next one. Is 2021 and COVID. Um, we're going to just spend a little bit of time on this because everybody sure. knows this is a hot topic. Um, this year, we saw people more so living with COVID, right? Right. So we, we've started going back outside. We're venturing out. Mm -hmm. I never wasn't outside. Y'all right. know me. I was protesting. I was flying. I was doing stuff. But I tried my best to protect myself. Right. And that's what everybody should do. Um Black America is not taking COVID that serious as far as protecting themselves, and neither is the poor whites. This is what I observe. Absolutely. Um, the the Black Americans and poor whites kind of are on the same page of what they believe and whatever. Rightfully so. I'm not saying it's wrong. Right. Um, especially where Black people are concerned because we believe the government does a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. Right. Um, but. Yeah. I just want to take the time to tell everybody to do whatever you can to research and protect yourself the best you can. Stop fighting each other over different views on a virus that none of us really understand. Mm -hmm. Right? Have you seen this? People are like mad. They they canceling weddings. They can't. You can't do this because you ain't been vaccinated. Like, yeah, it's well, crazy. It's the whole you do what's best for you and just try your best to research and be informed not just by the media but as people we can't rely you, you stop relying on a system that has lied to you in the past for years mm -hmm. especially for black people this is where the accountability needs to come to us do the research of how viruses work how keeping your immune system built by eating healthy taking multivitamins working out uh can help you as well don't rely on the jab either it, it the the situation is just really fucked up for the whole thing because it hurts my heart because a lot of this shit could have been avoided um and i'm not gonna get it just to make a long story short america we could have avoided this if we would have just practiced accountability and just had a care for one another truly and for helping things like i said back to what i said earlier quarantine and doing it the right way yeah we definitely didn't do it the right didn't way. do it the right way and <clears throat> thinking it's hoaxes and shit so with that being said do what you feel is best but what i want to say is think about others as well don't be selfish so if you know that you're not back if you know that you're in a position where you are going to possibly be contagious please refrain from going to public events please think about other people's lives so you do want to others you want to do unto yourself that's the biggest that's thing i say. think americans whether you're black white look black what homes i got like i'm brown brown yellow puerto rican and haitian i had to get i had to get a hip-hop right. hip-hop um lyric on there just be kind it's like everybody has gotten really like they don't care about people mm -hmm. like 
Just be kind and just try to protect other people and yourself, right? Yeah, that's all you got to do. Is so we won't spend too much time on COVID because right. everybody kind of, we, we know how this is. Right. So next slide, EK. Yeah, so just protect yourself at all times, like boxing this shit. Moments that set us back in 2021. My main one is the Gorilla Glue Girl. <laughs> okay. that's so Black cool. women. There yeah. is gel that holds your hair very great, and it's called gr Gorilla Snot, right? Um, mm -hmm. It has, has, has Spanish writing on it, and it translates to con gor Gorilla slot Snot. You've seen it in every mm -hmm. Asian-owned mm -hmm. black hair store, right? Right. Um, so I, I, I want to tell y'all so that you can use it, because it's great. You should never take glue and put it on your head and then make a video talking about it won't move. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. <sighs> it's not going to move. Okay? So that moment to me set us back. I feel like it set us back at least five months. <laughs> it had to. This broad, the Gorilla Glue Girl, for the, those of you who don't know, <clears throat> She put a little weed ponytail in, oh, right? God. So you know how you slick your hair down. Like today, I didn't, I didn't put any any gorilla snot in. I didn't put any eco styler in, right? But you know how you do that to make it real slick. She decided to take something called gorilla glue, <laughs> that is supposed to be about being so strong. Yeah. And then she got upset that it, her hair wouldn't move. She ended up having to get surgery for them to fix it. All this stuff. It was crazy. I think as a black people. As black people, that was a bad look on us. Do you have a moment this year that you feel like was a bad look? Outside of Kamala. Well, the, <laughs> well, I'm just gonna be honest. The Travis Scott situation. It's a bad look. It's a yeah. bad. Well, but the more I find out, about but it. it's more. I'm honestly though, it's not just about him. It's because was he wrong in certain aspects? Yes, but at the same time. I, I am not going to hold that man accountable for certain powers that he has no control over. First of all, for you parents out there taking your children to certain shit that you have no business taking it to, I'm so sorry. I'm going to hold it accountability. Everybody knows <sighs> Travis Scott concerts are a mosh pit. It's wild. It's And first of all, if your child is under 13, why the fuck are you taking them somewhere where this man raps about sex and things of that nature? At a festival where be, everybody's on be drugs. Be careful so you put but your child in But I found out way. something. Because I felt the same way. I found out something. World is what the amusement park used to be called in Houston that got shut down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Went under. So his whole brand... Is I'm bringing Astral World back, so it would be like I'm bringing Kings Dominion back, I'm bringing Six Flags back. So yeah. at these festivals, he has carnival rides. He, so you understand what I'm saying? So he is appealing to kids, I, not necessarily. So I do kind of get it. I get it, but at the same time, not necessarily because Dave and Buster's got games and shit too. But we know that's for adults. Yeah, but kids be up in there. Yeah, but typically, <laughs> but at a reasonable time and stuff. But a concert like. First of all, the artist Travis Scott, he got a song called Pornography, which is actually really good. Um, <laughs> it's like, you have to be accountable. Like, that's what I'm saying. Parents nowadays are not being accountable to what their I children agree. are listening yeah. to. My mom knew, okay, yeah. She knew certain things like, all right, yeah, but you ain't listening to this shit, and you ain't going to this shit. I remember, I was little, and I kid you not, I wanted to go to like a pop concert or a one of those uh, Bone Thugs calls. Mm -hmm. My mama was like, huh, no, you ain't. <laughs> and you know why she said? She said, you don't understand that. You're not, I'm not going to put you in that mm -hmm. kind of environment. So once again, the Travis situation. But I also don't want to blame the parents or anybody with the families because I don't know each particular situation. And maybe it was like a big brother, big sister. No, no, and I get that, but it's. We just, understand how crazy no, yeah, festivals can get. Right, but, but maybe it's, they just were It's naive. one of those, it's a hard thing, but I'm not for the family. I'm just saying. Future people out there, know the type of artist your child or loved one wants to see and know the type of environment. Google it. Google is people's best friends nowadays. I don't understand why people don't realize, okay, if you want to know something about somebody, that's the beauty of technology nowadays. You can literally go in and look at what people's work is. I literally tell people, if you want to be on Ish Talk, I need you to go to our YouTube page, Ish Talk TV. 
And I want you to see what we are. I'm not going to try to sell you something without letting you know, hey, by the way, this is what we are. Mm -hmm. We are a, an adult content talking type of event. Don't misperceive. And I don't like how people are just considering him the bad guy. Yes, he does a lot of things that are wrong. I'm not holding... I'm not saying he's 100% not guilty, but we're putting way too much. And I'm not going to lie. I'm going to play the race thing. Do we, would we hold the same uh, kind of energy if this was a uh, Ozzy Osbourne concert when nah, you're literally but, but, biting the heads off bats and no, shit? No, it's and not about biting that? heads off bats. It's about the fact is mosh pitting and raging is not of our culture. Okay? In white culture, in the white world of heavy metal or whatever they do these things but they ha there's there's an ethic system there's protocols yeah there's protocols oh there no no, really is. no I get what, it. what has happened is i get it i love that everybody's blurring the lines and we're starting to take things from different yeah. genres we need to go and talk to white people and research well because yeah you right. a lot of the stuff that's happening is not happening there because they've had enough time, they put in. They know what's safe, what's not. They have a they have a code of ethics. If somebody, if a woman or a child falls down, Some they're picking them up. The pit, the pit spreads. See, I'm I'm saying it's be, it's because we're not equipped for that, and it's cool. I don't right. want people to be in a box, but you have to understand. You have there's protocols to shit like that. You right. You can't just go rage and with people on drugs and think it's going to be okay. No. There's so many problems with that astral thing, and I think that it did set us back. I'm trying to rush. I don't want to No, no, you're right. There's an artist that we had on before, and he talked about how in the, in the like, certain white yeah, community last and, mosh, and, and mosh pits, white people help each other. Yes. But, and once again, the culture, this is why the culture needs to do a history and needs learn and understand. Cause we need to stop. Try to appropriate something. Right, because... I'm going to call a spade a spade without doing our hey, research. No, because motherfuckers will hit Tanner Club up, and we ain't picking you up. That's exactly. a man for himself. Move, bitch, we, get out the we way. We know this kind of stuff. Right, so... We know this. So we don't that, know that. That is something <laughs> entirely where the culture has to respect that. That's why I... For me, I like rock certain things. Like, I yeah, fuck with Linkin Park. I fuck with uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I have a I little cousin with, named after Linkin Park. Like, yeah, I, I, I fucks with, uh, you know, Green Day. I fuck, like, but once again, you know why? Because I do the research and I understand them and I go, wow. Like, Green Day had a song about suicide prevention called Hold On If You Feel Like Letting Go. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful fucking song. I forgot who's the lead singer. Please let me know later on. Armstrong. Yeah, Armstrong, the way he sung that shit. That hit me like he, he sung the lyrics were hold on if you feel like letting go. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a fucking oh, no, I'm, fantastic I'm a, first of all, song. especially in the 90s, I'm a huge rock But this was the, the earth, this was 04, 05. No, I'm just saying I love rock music. So wrong with it's, it's just black. But don't, but don't try to get something from there from there Without researching without it researching. and understand. You have to or understand Or you're going to have tragedy. It. So yeah, so that. That one gets me because now they're fucking with his money and label him as like an uh, evil individual. And I get it, but at a certain extent, you got to hold those people accountable because he did stop the show. And he did stop it one time. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the simple fact he stopped it, it had been different if he never stopped it. But we, that's what I'm saying. People have to hold accountability for themselves. He didn't make you punch somebody or step on him. You did that. I think the problem is the venue was overpacked. There's but that's fucking the problems. Right. But the, the main problem is the same thing we're saying. It's humans. Stop being so selfish. Stop being so like it's it's humans. It's I, all those people out there in the crowd. Right. If just because and, and I like how you said that because it goes back to men. Just because you hear back that ass up don't give you the right to try to grab a woman yeah. to get on you. Oh, man, the music, you already know how it is. You, I heard big booty popping. I got to get on one. <laughs> no, you need to get permission first, motherfucker. Consent. Yeah, is consent. Important. Don't let, because when people don't realize when you allow certain shit like that. So you mean tell me you're a grown ass individual and a song made you do this? Exactly. Oh, I. <laughs> oh, so, but you want me to give you some money. You want me to put you at a level or position where you you can't even listen to a fucking song without getting you nasty. I'm good. <laughs> you go ahead. Go ahead and go back to Barney and French, please. So those two things definitely set us back as black people. Yes. Um, Lindsay Rodriguez had a really good point. She said they had a scientist create a glue solvent to save her scalp, and he was black. So that's a win, what which is true. The guy who did the, the glue solvent was a black guy, so what? that's a win. A win, yeah. You know, so hopefully, black. hopefully we can find something that sets hey, us look, forward through this actual world. Black people is always... Hopefully. Black people always be the 
All right, get over here. I'll fix it. That's us oh, in yeah. the general. That's yeah. us in the So, hey, Ma. It's the old grandma. Did, come on in, Come baby. on in. Get come my on bag. In. Go get my purse. What you do yeah. now? What you do, Rodney? Oh, you did get this? Get that witch hazel out the uh -huh. bathroom over there. Uh -huh. you know oh, what wait. Oh, wait. He, what? Rodney in jail again? Let All me go right. get go get my purse. We're Look, get go purse. get my purse. Black people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any moments that y'all feel that set us back as a people this year, go ahead and put them in the comments. I give honorable mention to Tristan um, Thompson because, man, if you're going to cheat, at least try to be discreet. No, would, like, no first on, of all, man. no, I just want to say... Uh, Chloe, leave the motherfucker alone. Well, of course. Go to somebody else. But I'm talking about the black people. Oh, no. He's no. just doing too no, much. No. We gonna go, we gonna black go, men don't going. cheat. Niggas cheat. Oh, There's a difference. <laughs> black men don't cheat. Eric, next one. Black people don't cheat. Niggas cheat. Niggas cheat every day. <laughs> a rapper and athlete is, sing is faithful? Oh, my goodness. Is 50 Cent taking over the block? I say yes. No. I say yes. No. With his TV programming. Mm -mm. 50 Cent right now has the power universe, which... If you are a fan of The Wire like I am, you understand that Power is not the best well-written show, but it's very entertaining. Yeah, it's entertaining. B BMF is very entertaining and great, and, and BMF has one of the best villains that have ever been put on television. That motherfucker crazy as shit. Lamar is great. For Life is good. You know, you watch like that. <laughs> but 50 Cent is now developing a show about African warrior queens. It's different. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, it's different. But if he knocks it out the park, it's, it's going to be dope. Yeah, because that's unique. That's unique. 50 Cent, like we talked about Ja Rule, he ended Ja Rule's career, almost, for yeah. the most part. Yeah, for the most because part. Because he came in as a bully and was like, look, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I feel like 50 Cent is applying what... Ex everything 50 Cent did on the street, he applied to hip-hop. Yeah. Everything 50 Cent did in hip-hop, he is applying to TV. I love to see it. Yeah, I like. I love to see it. I well, I like the fact that Fifty. I feel like people don't understand because I can personally get it. People think he's an asshole, but if you know his story, to try no, to I get, in there, I think he's just try defensive. To get, no, he could be an asshole too. Don't get it twisted. But I understand, like when he first. You remember when he first got in? People forget. Fifty is not from the early, from just the early stuff. He's from the nineties. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize how to rob on on In Too Deep the movie that came out in ninety eight. That's mm -hmm. fifty. How to rob came out in the nineties, but after he got shot and stuff, the 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 industry blackballed him for a long time, and they treated him as an outsider. And fifty just said, "Wow, that's how y'all going to do it." Because of Ja Rule, Irv Gotti, and Prince. Yeah, and 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 he said, "Okay." Fuck y'all, but I also like that 50 is the kind of guy where it's like, he sees people as people. I'm going to go, at, if you do some silly shit, I'm going at you. Yeah, and I can does. respect that. Like he did Black, with, white, whatever. Yeah, don't like, care. like he did with Madonna. <laughs> I told people, why was he wrong? Madonna, you are 63 fucking years that old. Sit wrong. your ass down. And you had, it looked like you had ass shots. Sit it your. Like a chicken cutlet. And, and, right, and that goes for anybody of all races. Sit your old ass down. Stop trying to do things that young people do. You had your time. Mm -hmm. You were. Madonna is like, go sit down. Yeah. Nobody's checking for that no more. It's, it, you look you look ridiculous. You 63 years old. Why are you out here trying to do certain shit for young people? Go Man, sit down. Walk into it. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it ain't like you need the money. I think what hurt you were lonely and bored. You got the money. You're fine. I think she shouldn't be doing that. But I also think that it's time for... Uh, certain people to stop stop just always performing in leotards and yeah. be, you know, but Shut that's the fuck me. Down. But Collect, it is what it is. Collect your cash. What, I'll I'm, be what I'm my saying cash. is that I think that what we are watching Fifty do is amazing. I think that he is creating so much different uh, content in Black America, and his biggest um, everybody biggest thing was. Well, can we make movies? Can we make shows about something other than mm -hmm. drug selling and something like that? I kept saying, well, he has four life. That's not about selling drugs. It's like the guy is. No. So 50 was like, nah, okay. I'm going to give you an African. I'm trying to tell you the man is a marketing genius, and I think it's amazing. Well, and I, I love to see it, and I think it's Right, great. and I like, but um, a lot of other guys are doing that. Like Rick Ross, when he did Coming to America too. he had that in his home. And they paid him to use his home. Coming to America, too, I get is it. Definitely not something you should ever bring up with what I'm hey, talking about. Hey, I'm so mad I about get... that movie. I didn't even put it on the list. Hey. It's one of those movies, like I said, for me personally, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I get where they were going with it. But it wasn't trash. It, it wasn't the it's same. It's just, 
It wasn't the same. If, oh, you, if you're gonna read, if you're gonna do a class, oh, absolutely, I agree. You like, know how I'm sitting here like, where? Uh, I need them barbershop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, 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 that was the big part that they should. Hey, to me, who gonna pick up all these don't flowers? You feel, don't you feel like they dropped the ball in that? It's oh, like, yeah. that's the most iconic man. Part. When he said, "I'm gonna call him Clay," I'm gonna call him Clay. Where was Randy Watson? I like Randy Watson when he did. I need Randy Watson. I need all the people in the barbershop, even the uh, him playing the uh, Italian guy. Yes. I need, the, the, no, what is was, it, I, Velvet? I think, he, I think he was Jewish. Oh, Jewish, the, I'm sorry. No, I need, I just needed the old If 80s. a man wants to be called yeah, that, that, uh, that's Muhammad what Ali, Look, God damn it, I'm a call I him. It's a free the, country. Like, I need I that. I need to hear the random, you don't fuck. I need that. <laughs> I need that shit. Eddie, I need the 80s Eddie. Like, I want... Raw, yes. delirious. I need that shit. I don't give you. I, you know you how treat we me feel. like animal. <laughs> you know how we feel about coming to America. And, That's his and, and best we, movie of had, all time. And we have been asking for it forever. So you and Arsenio and all y'all. You were supposed to come deliver something. Yeah, man. And I know people say, oh, well, that's the old mindset. Who gives a fuck? The old mindset worked. It's the, a class. It's a it's classic a, it's comedy. It's his greatest that movie. That still hits today. It's his greatest movie, his <laughs> greatest work of all we time. We needed another. Right. We needed a part two to hit in 20, Every, 30 years. Right. And that one is not going to do Everything it. don't have to Kanye coincide with that. the middle of coming to America. Right. I, I, I hate to interrupt you. But the first. Oh, my God. <laughs> Like, if y'all couldn't hear, Eric said Kanye should have came on and interrupted and be like, I'm going to let you finish, but Coming to America 1 is the best yes. copy of all time. Where was the wipers? Yes. The royal penises clean, your highness. Where was all that shit? Where was soul glow? Just let, I want to know how, how that motherfucker was doing afterwards. Let your soul glow. Just let there were just so many quotables. There's so many parts, and I felt like part two, while it wasn't trash, right? And I liked it, what they were trying to do with the whole women's movement. You, That's, it just, it felt everything contrived. don't need to be with the time. It felt contrived a little bit, right? I need, but but I, it's it's not it's right. not that right. It's, I not, need, that. it's I, not it's not even trading places. It, it's not even forty eight hours. Right, a nutty it's professor. Not, it's not donations, not donations. I thought it was a trash can. Yeah. <laughs> you tall black motherfucker. So, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need that. I need that. <laughs> Okay, next slide. So shout out to fifty. Shout out to fifty. Shout out to shout out to fifty. I miss your uncle. Your mom. Shout out to fifty for doing for doing those things, and you know for just not just mastering music. You mastered other shit. He sold water for a hundred and something million dollars. Yes, so good for you. But I know. Look, I'm just saying, you sold water. It was crazy. And made. I, you know what? I wish I could open a faucet water and be like, I want a hundred million dollars <laughs> for right? that shit. So shout out to you. So hey. 50. Oh, shit, you been working out? Yeah. Look, the, the, arm, the arm a little hard. You know what I'm saying, look, I look, I ain't saying nothing bad about 50. You said, yeah. guys like 50, you got to be able to knuckle yeah, up. Look, when dudes start working out, they, their stance is like this. <laughs> well, that's just because our bodies are, yeah. our bodies force us mm -hmm. to do that. Our, our All forces. right, so we're about to close out, but I just wanted to take the time to oh, boy. This is good. talk about... <clears throat> We lost a lot of important people to the culture, a lot yes. of important people to people in general. Yes, we did. Um, in hip hop, and I just wanted to showcase some of those people. As you can see, we got Virgil Abol, who is like a fashion icon, and what he has done in the name of fashion and mm -hmm. put um, black people and black second generation foreign people on the map. Mm -hmm. Biz Markie, who's legendary, you know, you say she's just a friend, everybody knows that song, no matter what. Um, he passed away, unfortunately. Shock G. We got Melvin Van Peebles. Melvin Van Peebles is a um, filmmaking icon. He's the father of Mario Van Peebles. Shock G, of course, is from Digital Underground, who is a direct reason why Tupac was able Digital to Digital Underground, guys, famous. look it up. Look up Digital Underground. Um, we have Black Rob. That situation was very sad. He yes. um, had to open, they had to open a GoFundMe for him and AJ Johnson at the bottom when they passed. Um, so black people definitely get your X. financial affairs in, in order. Prince Marky D from Fat Boys, um, yep. Yep. he passed away this year. Cicely Tyson, the beloved actress, amazing. If you talk, if you want to talk about grace in class, just watch a uh, mm -hmm. interview with her. She reminded me so much of my grandma because she looked like her when she was younger. 
Um, beautiful, and she was so beautiful. She ate so, so gracefully. So she ate gracefully. She ain't never getting no plastic surgery. I don't she think didn't it don't look to. like none of it. But and, she was just so and she, elegant. And a lot of people don't even realize she used to be married to the legendary yes. Miles Davis. Yes, Miles Davis. Um, so she don't been with somebody who's on a little drug, a little booger sugar or something. <laughs> so she, got, she had a little And he had a it. nasty temper. Yes, and he had temper. And he was on, apparently he, he used to like the white lines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit. It's the blue. It, 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 that's how he played it so well. Yes. <laughs> you can you know how musicians are with <laughs> drugs. <laughs> you know. um, we have, of course, um, Paul Mooney, who passed away this year, legendary comedian, used to write for Richard Pryor. That motherfucker. Um, yeah, I mean, that also mother was on uh, Dave Chappelle, very controversial <sighs> because he would speak a lot about race. He would offend people. One of those, you know, he's in a, he's in a vein of shock jock era type yes, of. Yes, uh, and he warned people about certain like black influences that he was like, all right, y'all feel like they they helping y'all. Yeah, I ain't gonna say names because you already know. Look it up. So, you know what I'm saying? He was a, definitely a legend who passed. We have DMX. Earl Simmons, y'all. That's the That one hit hard it made because me so sad. it was tragic. Especially because all of us know his story right. and what he went through. And, when, yeah. and it's like, it's so tragic because he was a le Like, guys, this is a Hall of Fame guy. And we, me and Bimo based our friendship off of his events. We always said this. You can go back into our page. <laughs> Apparently, you over here looking like a whole four-course meal. Flex for the ladies. Put your arm up. I ain't got nothing to flex. Flex. I ain't got nothing to flex. Oh, 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 I can. oh you, you ain't on the thing. Look, on. I ain't got nothing to flex. Look, there ain't nothing over here. Ain't nothing, <laughs> ain't nothing right All there. All right, put it back on. But no, DMX, like, I've told people, me and B-More's friendship, we go, I say, we go back to Dark as Hell is Hot. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the year, then you just got to look it up. But mm -hmm. no, rest in peace to the legend and... Um, stream, buy his things, help his family with money. Uh, and if you've never read it, it's one of my favorite biopics books of all time. Read his memoir. Yeah, he was, DM, DMX's book, and I had told somebody that like a year ago, yep. before he passed, and they were like, what's your favorite books? And I was telling them, and they were like, really? And I was like, I'm trying to tell you, if you, like, you will always... No matter what you hear in the news about him, you will always root for him if you read that right. book. Right. DMX is so and please authentic. Read it. He is yes. authentic. Like, you the want fact it. that he was able to accomplish what he was accomplished with what he had been through as a child. Man, like, he was amazing. in a foster care when and dad just dropped him off. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling y'all, X is, y'all like y'all these new generation people. Y'all like rap. Oh, I like he real to the streets. That's a real dude. And he was gifted. People forget his albums were on Jay-Z type mm -hmm. shits and they surpassed. There was a window where from 98 to like 02, you know, X was that guy in New York. He was. Dark and hell is hot. Flesh of my flesh. And then there was X. The, the Great Depression. Those four albums right there, he got basically two, like what? Shit, you can say he got three so classics. So... For black, so for 2021, rest in peace and to all you uh, uh, black, uh, black wonderful people, Melvin Van Peebles. He was the Spike Lee before Spike Lee. He really was. DMX. I had the pleasure of seeing him live in concert. I wow. actually, I am, I'm old enough to say that I went to the Cash Money Rush Rough Riders concert. Oh shit! I really did. I have a lot what of stories. What was that? Was that, that. was that amazing? That was amazing. Um, uh, baby Lil Wayne. This is back when Lil Wayne had just started to curse because it was a time when Lil Wayne didn't even curse. Right. They came out in a motorcycle, I mean, a helicopter. I had brought my little brother. Right. Who was also in high school, but still, they brought girls out to twerk. I had to cover his eyes. It was crazy. But DMX, I've seen a lot of people. I've met a lot of celebrities. I have seen a lot of shows. Is one of the best performers I've ever seen in my life. When he performed and then he would break down and do that prayer i'm talking about the whole now it's called something else what was uh is it called the verizon center now uh it ain't the verizon center anymore i think it's something else okay so you, no, no. One in DC. Yeah, it used to the be. Big, I remember it. it I'm still gonna remember the. I'm still gonna remember the MCI Center. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So the MCI Center for y'all who was back in the day. Um, I went and saw that, and when I tell you, he, you know, you can't fake energy. You can't fake emotion. He had grown ass men in the concert bawling because. He was so real, and he was a performer. Take out, take out the emotional aspect. When I tell you, when he stepped on that stage, 
You see so many rappers now, they like, they start sweating, they got 50 million people on the stage. DMX had no one. Mm -hmm. It was him. This is the same way that Kendrick performs, by the mm -hmm. way. It was him. And he commanded and controlled that entire venue. It, and it was amazing to witness. It was. So if you didn't get to see him perform, you know, he's passed now, I'm sorry, but hopefully you can go look at some... Um, well, YouTube got plenty of them, and, and a lot of people put X in, like, they basically they say he was a Yonkers Pac, because with the with the energy and the emotions and the emotion behind the lyrics, mm -hmm. you could you could correlate, you could put those two in the, in the same realm of emotion. I used to get upset when people would compare Pac to anybody. Um, mm -hmm. I even got, I love Nipsey Hussle, but I hate when he said it, Tupac of this generation, but I get it. Right. Especially now after the death, I get it because you were trying to teach your people, and you know, right. DMX is the only comparison I've never got upset of. You oh, know yeah. why? Because one thing about Pac, whether he was right, wrong, and different, whether he mm -hmm. felt this way this day, whether he saw he was contradicting himself, he was a human and, and showed himself as a human, mm -hmm. and that's what DMX did. And yeah, as so a, I can see, I can see the comparison. Right, and as a human, authentic, and it's not always. I, I love how people think it's always contradiction. Not necessarily. It's everybody, growing. Yeah, everybody's and not going to always be. It's not always black and white about certain things. It's, sometimes you got to come in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm just saying that. Just come in the middle. Just go in the middle. Everything ain't black and white. Some Everything's things, not black Some and things white. a little gray. And then, unfortunately, um, the most recent death was Young Dolph, um, <clears throat> who was once again killed in a place where he grew up. Um, we're tired of it. We're tired of it, y'all. Um, we're tired everybody of Everybody needs to stay safe. There's a lot of home invasions happening, you know, uh, which yep. we knew was going to be robbing season because of the virus and yeah. the economy is, is hurting. But, um, mm -hmm. it's very sad, you know, that he didn't get to live out his full potential. Um, mm -hmm. and damn they shame. just had the memorial there and there was gunshots at the memorial mm -hmm. and the cops were on tape chasing down somebody. I don't, I haven't really researched it to know... What happened? But did you hear about that? Yeah. They started shooting yeah. at his young, I'm a funeral? Just young people, having a gun don't make you a tough guy. Please tell them. Please. Um, just walk away from shit and let's just walk away alive. If you have to fight, use uh, your If somebody's fist. coming after your children, that's after different, your body, yeah. that's different. But stop killing, over every little thing, stop it's so killing stupid. For, stop killing for clout because... Stop killing for clout. It should be a, it's, it's a just, campaign. It's stupid because you're going to be forgotten. I'm, I'm telling you this now from people I experience. You will be forgotten in two months. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you. It might be less than a month depending on who you are. So while you're gone, all your problems or other people that you, insecurities that you have will be shown. And, you know, your maker is going to be looking at you. So, guys, stop killing for bullshit. Just walk away. And you're not tough because you have a gun. You are tough. When you can walk through the bullshit. When you can take care of your family. When you can yes. be a, a leader that in your That is what community. a man is. Just because somebody tells you. Because a lot of times what gets me. And I'm going to just make it short. is the Usually it's those people. The bitch ass people who start the shit. The ones that be shooting. Like there's a rapper that currently got killed. He whooped the dude's ass right. He gets up. It was on O Block in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He gets up and walk away. It ain't like oh, he see, was, I heard about it that. It ain't like he was beating him. Like trying to kill him. He whooped his ass. Was like hey. It's it done. Is what it, is. it is what, and then the guy gets up and shoot him. See, that's the problem. See, that's the problem. Nobody knows how to take an ass whooping. Nobody knows. Which, which is what John Witherspoon's character was so trying to tell y'all back in, in, in Friday. Yeah. He said, "You so you sissified. Yeah. You're so you're afraid to get your ass whooped. When back in my day, we would fight, but we would live to yes, we and, would live and, another and day because these men, these males, don't understand. Like because in a way. Living with an ass whooping is harder than a bullet because now you know, oh man, I got to live with the decisions that I made that even got my ass whooped. Mm -hmm. Because now, a lot of times, like I said, if you started some shit, any man, you start some shit and it doesn't go your way on your shit. You got to sit back and go, you know what? I I did I did step the wrong way. I was getting out of pocket. Yeah, I got my ass whooped, but I'm still alive. But I'm still alive, and, it's and okay. I can, and I, and it's okay. Somebody gotta lose in the fight. That's what y'all need to know. Right? Somebody's gonna lose. Somebody's gonna lose. And it's okay. Even, even if certain people remind you all the time, because I ain't gonna lie, I'm that nigga in the group where I be like, "Hey, you did get your ass whooped." Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna call you a pansy. I will. Well, AJ will. Mm -hmm. But it's just so what? Yeah, so what? So just what? Start saying so what? It's and, not worth it. And side note, you can fight more than once. Shit, mm -hmm. 
there's people I've seen where it's like, okay, you whooped my ass the first right, You had a three? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> right. Let's make it a but series. I, but I would much rather that. That's why I wasn't mad at the bone stuff because they they came back, apologized. They, they continued the show. I'm not mad about mm-hmm. the Jim Jones and Freddie Gibbs thing. That shit's actually I'm, funny. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad. No, I'm not I thought, mad. I, I think, think I think funny. I think it's unbalanced. I think the dude snuck them, but but Jim Jones showed why the nineties people is who. They I are. get it, but Gibbs. We get that, to it. I know. And Gibbs is it. that kind of dude. He be talking to shit. Yeah, it's like Gibbs. You but run my your mouth thing too is, much. but my thing is, they fought. They fought. He whooped his ass. They didn't and, shoot. No, like, he, and you and so, and that's all it needs. Like there is men. If you if you talk that shit, don't expect to have a gun to back, back you up. You, if I talk shit to Dwayne Johnson right now, I better be expected to, to <laughs> back rock. it up. We got the we got the brawl, but I'm not gonna shoot him, no. Especially if I'm the one starting the shit. So guys, and today for the for the young Dolph people generations, and now it's not worth it. It's not because that clout can't can't carry you to the afterlife. And if these so called, because you know in the black culture, a lot of us grow up in the church. Mm-hmm. You really think God is gonna look at you and be like? Yeah, you can come to heaven because you got caught sleeping, caught slipping, but you was the one talking to shit, so goodbye. Mm-hmm. Just think of it like that, guys. Think of it like that. Do you so, really want to leave behind bullshit? You don't want to leave behind, especially when real things are really happening in the world. Which brings me to our closeout segment. As you can see on the screen, it says Justice for Xavier Hill. I've covered this case many times. Xavier Hill was... Um, murdered by Virginia police um, in January of this year. Um, for you to understand the case, please watch the previous episode I had with his mother, Latoya. But basically, Xavier Hill's case is a case that we've heard many times before. Yeah. Many, many times before. There is real stuff happening in this world. Mm-hmm. And there, is, are, there are injustices happening. His mother needs help with legal fees. His mother needs help fighting these things and getting justice for her son who she loved so much that's the real stuff that's happening so shooting someone because they looked at you wrong in a line or being upset and not what you know you got your you you started fighting you got your ass whooping not being able to take an ass whooping and just wanting to kill somebody is whack as shit to me uh-huh. because we have real deal situations happening those children's parents and people's parents at astral world will never see their kids again uh-huh. that is a real deal situation latoya benson uh, xavier hill's mom is in pain all the time because her son is gone that is a real deal situation it, it just i hate that there's so much violence right now in our community because even like when I think back, I used to beef with girls and we would fight. And a lot of the fights, if they weren't over a dude, it was, she looked at me wrong. Maybe she liked your earrings. Like now that I'm older, it's like stupid. Like sometimes people stare. I stare at people sometimes and don't even realize I'm staring. I'm like just, you know, zoning out. I'm not really looking at you, but I'm looking at you. So everybody, please, please, please focus on peace. Please, 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 rest in peace to all of the people who have passed, all of our fo- fallen people. Thank you very much for tuning in to this year-end wrap-up. Thank you, Ish Talk TV, for coming through. Appreciate you guys. Always appreciate you. Thank you, Eric, DJ EK, for the amazing commentary today <laughs> and for not being mad at me that I ran over today, <laughs> even though he has to work tomorrow. Um... But thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe. Make sure you follow Ish Talk TV as well. And thank you guys. Have a great night. Thank you for being here. And follow A Turner underscore 813. You know me. There you go. Look, 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 look at the arms. Thank no you arms. guys. Peace. Y'all take care. Peace and love.